Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of what if Naruto became the fire daimyo's harbinger if you enjoy the video then like, share and subscribe and also comment your thoughts as it inspires me to make more such videos and remember to check out my playlist section for other interesting stories. So let's get started. Chapter 6 Invasion Naruto was walking through Konoha's streets. His mind on different things being drawn out with the events pertaining to the Chunin exams as they got closer and closer. It was only recently that he found the corpse of the sound ninja under the guise of Konoha 1 that was one of Kabuto's teammates, who had advanced during the preliminaries to the finals. All thanks to Sabaku no Gara crushing said ninja with his sand because the red-haired boy was provoked because the two were meant to fight each other among the start of the Chunin exam finals. Not that it mattered if the fake Konoha ninja participated or not. In truth, the agent of Orochimaru was going to be arrested on the day of the Chunin exam finals, and let his opponent win by disqualification. You seem very focused and serious today Naruto-san. Far too focused and serious for someone your age, remarked Tamari while leaning against a building with a smirk on her face. Tamari-san. How are you today? I imagine the weather here in Konoha is much different than what you are used to in Suna replied Naruto politely since he had no reason to insult the daughter of the case cage. It is different. In Suna, we have intense skin blistering heat, winds that can kick up the sand to the sky above, and the sand itself, well let's just say there is more than enough of it to go around, said Tamari with her smile never leaving her face. I'll take your word for it, said Naruto with Tamari walking towards him. I have heard some interesting rumors about you. I wasn't sure what they say is true and what is made up. It creates an air of mystery around you Naruto-san. And I love a good mystery, replied Tamari with Naruto raising an eyebrow at her, but decided to humor the kunoichi. So what do you want to know? Asked Naruto while motioning for her to follow him while they talked. Well, for starters I heard you were from Konoha, but had a terrible childhood growing up said Tamari since she felt it was the best way for her to approach Naruto, even if it was a sensitive subject. It is true. I have suffered during my time in Konoha. My childhood was far from happy. I hear your brother was the same as well and for the same reasons, replied Naruto with Tamari nodding while her eyes became sad. Yes. My father wanted to turn my brother into a weapon for Suna. At first, Gara was spoiled in the hopes of gaining his love, and loyalty so he would fight for our village. But over time, we learned Gara's seal was barely strong enough to contain Shukaku, and the biju within him would come out if he slept for even a second. My father saw Gara as a flawed weapon after it happened the first time and following that moment, everything changed, replied Tamari while Naruto had an idea of what she meant by that. So instead of being loved, your brother was hated, feared, surmised Naruto with Tamari nodding while her eyes became sadder. My father hired assassins to kill Gara. He would say, flawed weapons have no place in Suna or in this family. When the assassins were asked about the target and why they were going after the case cage's son. Not only that, but my father portrayed Gara as if he was Shukaku himself in human skin. The sand protecting Gara didn't exactly make people think differently. All of the children would run away from him calling him a monster. Gara even tried to apologize once to a boy for losing his ball, but the boy practically shoved it back in Gara's face. It wasn't until our uncle on my mother's side of the family tried to kill Gara did he finally, snapped, explained Tamari while Naruto frowned. Why would your uncle try to kill Gara? asked Naruto curiously. Because my mother was used in the sacrifice needed to seal Shukaku into Gara. My uncle blamed Gara for her death and kept his resentment at bay for eight long years until finally, dot the man couldn't take it anymore. When it happened, Gara was very close to our uncle, and never would have suspected betrayal from him. But it happened and the end result made Gara cold. Cruel. Though I don't need to tell you that. You've seen his eyes for yourself, replied Tamari with Naruto nodding. I have. Your brother is like me in many aspects, yet different due to how we ended up being raised. In the long run, I could have ended up like him. I see myself in Gara had I gone through such a betrayal of that magnitude, said Naruto with Tamari raising a her own eyebrow at this. Didn't you with the Sandame Hokage? Rumor has it you had a falling out with him and two of the Sanin upon coming back here, questioned Tamari with Naruto nodding. I did in a sense, but this is different. The three you speak of were not my blood. 
Not my family. Granted Senju Tsunade is technically my distant cousin, but I do not, and will not acknowledge her as family. She has forsaken her Uzumaki blood and dishonored the very principles of the Senju. I do not feel hatred for her. Only pity. When Senju Tsunade dies, her true torment will begin, and she will have no one to blame. Dot but herself, said Naruto calmly yet coldly. You assume your family wouldn't have been the same way, said Tamari with Naruto stopping and looking at her. My mother never intended for me to be a Jinchuriki. At least not right away. The act of the sealing was forced because someone was trying to cause this village's destruction on the night of my birth. I have it on good authority of the fire daimyo himself that both my parents loved each other and loved me until the end. Kayubi himself confirmed this by showing me his memories of them just before their death, said Naruto while Tamari was shocked by this. You've, you've actually spoken to your biju, asked Tamari since she had never heard anything about this happening before in the past. Yes, unlike Gara's seal, mine is strong enough to keep the Kayubi's influence at bay, but it doesn't stop me from making a connection with him. I've spent many days forming a bond with my biju. Sadly, I don't expect Shukaku to do the same given his level of insanity so I would advise Gara against such an attempt on his part, said Naruto with Tamari nodding since she didn't believe he would mislead her about this information. Naruto may be a Jinchuriki from another country, but Tamari was sure he didn't want to hurt someone like himself with a similar burden. Plus, the Suna Kunoichi suspected if Gara did make such an attempt with Shikaku, the biju would tear him apart from the inside, and kill her little brother before going on a rampage. Could you? Dot fix his seal. I mean, the Uzumaki clan were renowned for their mastery in the way of sealing so. Asked Tamari with Naruto thinking it over in his head. What do you think Kurama? Should I help her brother with his seal? Thought Naruto since he wanted the biju's opinion on the situation. By all means, the tighter and stronger the seal that binds Shukaku the better. That damn raccoon never had any sense of self-respect as one of the nine biju. He should be restrained tightly for his past actions, replied Kurama with anger in his voice. Don't be like that Kurama. Would you want him to say the same thing about you if roles were reversed? Thought Naruto with Kurama grumbling. No, I suppose not. Still, you should tighten Shukaku's seal to shut him out. If only to help the boy sleep at night. All those years without sleep do not help one's sanity, said Kurama with Naruto nodding. I can take a look at the seal Tamari-san. Sadly, I am not an expert seal master despite my understanding of seals being quite literally in my blood, but I have been studying the matter in my father's library. Further, I'm sure I can examine the seal to see where it is weak, and with some careful research make those areas stronger replied Naruto while making a mental note to have Shadow Clones investigate the study of sealing and maybe even ask Karen to assist in learning the art. It never hurt to have an extra hand on the matter. Thanks. I would really appreciate it. I know my father wants me to keep my emotional feelings toward Gara at a minimum, but I can't stand the idea of him in such pain even though he's given as good as he's got. My brother never acts to be made a Jinchuriki or becoming a weapon for Suna. I just... I just want Gara to have some measure of actual and natural happiness that doesn't involve taking a life needlessly, said Tamari, as she felt herself suddenly overcome with a desire to express herself in this matter without it being overly necessary for this, seduction, she was supposed to undertake to get Naruto on Suna's side. I understand. As I said, I would help you in this when I can. Now if you will excuse me Tamari-san, I am needed elsewhere at the moment said Naruto before bowing to her politely and walking away from the now happy Kunoichi. Maybe this mission won't be so bad after all, thought Tamari before Naruto stopped and looked at her. Also, I think you should inform your sensei, and siblings that your father is dead. The case cage you serve and is coming here soon is a false one, said Naruto with Tamari looking at him in shock. W what? How can you say that? What proof do you have of such a thing has happened to my father? Asked Tamari while looking around and found they were in a more quiet part of Konoha with few people in the area. I had Jiraiya of the Sanin look into it with his spy network. Not only that, but one of Orochimaru's own key spies was caught during the Chunin exams, and spilled what his master planned to do in order to get deep within Konoha's walls, replied Naruto with Tamari looking shocked by this news. Then why didn't you tell me sooner? 
Why not tell my sensei? We could have stopped it before my father was assassinated. Questioned Tamari with Naruto shaking his head. Orochimaru killed your father shortly after the Chunin exam preliminaries and by the time we got the plan out of the Sanin spy, your case cage was already dead. The snake Sanin is impersonating him so he can manipulate Suna's ninja into going through with his plan to attack Konoha. He needs to act like the case cage in order to keep the alliance with his sound forces intact. After all, if Suna learned its case cage were killed, and at the hands of the one the one they allied with, dot the snake Sanin would find himself in a very tricky situation when the invasion comes along, replied Naruto while giving her a hint as to what she should do next with what he just told her. Why are you helping Suna? Why are you doing any of this? What do you gain from it? Asked Tamari while Naruto smiled slightly at her. I'm helping to fix the error your village made toward Gara. I'm helping to heal the bond you have with your family. Both you and Konkuro are afraid of Gara and believe he will kill either of you regardless if he is provoked. Meanwhile, Gara himself has no one in his life to love him, and will one day die alone in the darkness. People like Gara, like us, we should not die that way, much less live that way regardless of what others may think. I am not doing this just for Gara, but rather I'm doing this for everyone like us, and giving them a chance to achieve happiness in their lonely dark world, replied Naruto before walking off to leave the Suna Kunoichi alone with her thoughts. Fire Daimyo's hotel room. So you told the Suna Kunoichi what you know about the case cage's death. Why? How could you be sure she wouldn't stay the course for the invasion to honor her father's dying wish? Asked the fire daimyo once Naruto came to see him and deliver his report on the matter. For one, the case cage is her father. Even if he joined in the alliance with Orochimaru to invade Konoha to destroy the village, it didn't give the Sanin the right to kill the man just to get close to achieve his objective. Besides, the Suna ninja are loyal to their cage, and they wouldn't dare dream of knowingly follow a fake as well as the one responsible for the real cage's death, explained Naruto while kneeling before the fire daimyo. I take it there is more in your reason. Questioned the fire daimyo with Naruto nodding his head once. I wanted to prevent needless bloodshed. Konoha's future is already looking grim, even with a sliver of light among the darkness that surrounds the village. There is no need for it to end in violent merciless bloodshed. If Konoha is to fall, it should fall by your word, and your word alone daimyo-sama. Not Orochimaru. I merely wish to ensure Konoha's future is not taken out of your hands, replied Naruto while the fire daimyo nodded though he suspected there was more. And Sabaku no Gara, He is like you correct. Only with a weaker and possibly faulty seal. Questioned the fire daimyo with Naruto nodding. Yes on all counts daimyo-sama. I intend to help Gara by strengthening his seal and giving him a peace of mind. In doing so, I save the life of someone like myself, and give us strong neighboring allies should we have need of their help in certain matters. All that I do benefits you and fire country, replied Naruto with the fire daimyo nodding his head in agreement. Agreed. I have spoken to my fellow daimyo in wind country and explained to him the matter regarding Suna to him. After what has happened here, as well as my own personal recommendations, I would have to say his interests will be redirected back to Suna soon enough when the Chunin exams are over here. Of course that will only happen if we can prevent Suna from still joining in the invasion with Orochimaru's sound ninja, said the fire daimyo with Naruto nodding. Hence why I have been trying to assist Suna with some of its problems that have led to this action. By removing these reasons to attack Konoha, as well as expose Orochimaru's hand in killing their case cage, Suna will be our ally, and assist Konoha in repelling the invasion rather than assisting in it. If we time everything just right, Orochimaru will die during the invasion, and his forces will be brought down into submission, replied Naruto confidently with the fire daimyo nodding. Another good point on your part. But remember, Orochimaru is one of the Sanin, and is not so easily defeated. He is the personification of deceit and has been known to slither out of danger when needed. Add to the fact his former sensei is conspiring with him only makes things worse. There is also the X factor that is Senju Tsunade and her dislike for you Naruto. She may try to attack and you during the invasion among the chaos that will arise from the attack by Orochimaru, explained the fire daimyo with Naruto nodding. I know. I have been training this entire month in preparation for Orochimaru's attack and Tsunade's eventual assault during it. I won't allow either to succeed. 
To further that goal, I suggest you have Shizune and Itachi stand beside you under the pretense of requiring additional ninja protection. It will protect one while making the Uchiha clan calm down since they have been giving the Itachi a hard time recently regarding his support of me. It will redirect their mental energies into thinking Itachi has earned himself a high standing as a ninja among your military ranks and keep them quiet for a time, said Naruto with the fire daimyo nodding since he planned to do that anyway. What of Jiraiya of the Sanin? Can he be trusted? Asked the fire daimyo with Naruto thinking about the man for a second. For the moment, yes he can be trusted. The information about the Sandame Hokage and Orochimaru working together with this invasion after all these years has shaken his faith in his sensei greatly. I have done all that I can to convince him that what the Sandame is doing is wrong and must be stopped. He will stop Orochimaru and his forces right outside Konoha's walls. But if you are asking me if he will fight the Sandame in an actual fight between opponents, my answer to you is an immediate no. He won't fight his old sensei replied Naruto with the fire daimyo letting out a sad sigh at having the most promising of the three sanin still fall so far with the other two being no better in regards to their own past actions. One sanin was a scheming monster who performed inhumane experiments on people. The other sanin was a bitter woman and mean drunk who blamed one innocent person for the death of another. We'll deal with them when the time is right. Carry out your duties my boy. Crush all who stand in your way commanded the fire daimyo firmly to Naruto who nodded once at the order. As you command daimyo-sama, said Naruto before he left in a swirl of leaves. The boy is making great progress, remarked Saito, as he was in the room with the two, and performing his bodyguard duties in protecting the fire daimyo. I know, but there is still much for him to do and I worry for him. Even now, I feel it isn't right to put so much on one so young but at the same time I know Naruto is our best bet to fixing this situation, replied the fire daimyo with Saito smirking. The boy is strong, like his father and mother before him. He has made them proud so far. I do not expect him to fail anytime soon in the coming days, replied Saito with the fire daimyo nodding. I pray you are right my friend. I pray you are right, said the fire daimyo knowing the boy's mettle would be tested soon in the coming days. Hyuga clan compound at the moment. A marriage contract, with the demon brat, him, out of everyone in Konoha. We did not agree to this Hiyashi, protested a Hyuga elder among the Hyuga clan, who had always tried to enforce the power of his position within the clan. You don't have to agree with this because your authority does not extend that far, said Hiyashi calmly though it was clear his temper was running short and thin with the elders due to their actions in trying to move in on clan matters meant to be handled by the clan head. According to who? demanded the elder while Hiyashi glared at him. To me, as well as the laws of this clan. Hanada is my daughter and if I wish to set up an arranged marriage with Onnamikaze Uzumaki Naruto I will, said Hiyashi with the elder fuming at him for this. That. Dot boy is unstable. A mistake if there ever was one. Even if his current position is highly favorable with the fire daimyo, he is still beneath the Hyuga clan, and your daughter despite her own low status within the clan. I will not approve of this union. I will appeal this act before the fire daimyo himself if I must. Exclaimed the Hyuga elder while Hiyashi's glare intensified. Appeal all you wish. The fire daimyo approved it himself. Until a legitimate reason does in fact arises in the future, the arranged marriage between my daughter and one Uzumaki Naruto is going to stand. I will not tolerate anyone usurping my authority on this clan matter. Am I understood? declared Hiyashi with the Hyuga elders grumbling. None of the people in the room liked this move. Word had spread about this arranged marriage like wildfire throughout the clan. Many in the branch family were thrilled to know Hanada was going to marry such an influential figure close to the fire daimyo and was also part of the ancient Uzumaki clan. Many branch family members knew all about the Uzumaki clan because of the clan's skill with seals being second to none. They had first hoped that with Namikaze Minato becoming the Hokage, as well as marrying one Uzumaki Kashina, the two wooden could come up with a way to save the branch family of the Hyuga clan from the oppression that the cage bird seal represented to them. When the two died and Jiraiya went off to do whatever it was that Jiraiya did outside of Konoha, the hope of the Hyuga branch family died. Jiraiya himself didn't really care about the Hyuga clan and only entertained the idea of helping them because Minato did after becoming Hokage. 
But now with Naruto being their son, he would have access to their clan library, everything about seals at his fingertips, and could save the Hyuga clan from what could be an inevitable civil war within the clan itself. Of course, the Fire Daimyo's Harbinger would need a reason to even get involved in such a messy affair of another clan. Hence where Hinata would come into play. The girl hated the cage bird seal. Always have since she first saw it used and didn't like the idea of causing family pain. It had earned the girl the love of the branch, but the scorn of the main family. The only true exception among the branch family was Neji and while many sympathized with the boy over the loss of his father, they didn't see the need to punish the girl for being unable to defend herself within her own home at the age of three. If anything, the adults of the clan should be ashamed for letting the incident get that far under their very noses before the kidnapper was caught. Hiyashi, Hiyashi, I must speak with you still on this matter exclaimed the Hyuga elder while Hiyashi sighed and turned around in the hallway to see the older man huffing with much effort toward the clan head's direction. What is it father? I am busy, said Hiyashi with his father looking like he ran a mile and it showed just how old the man was that him rushing just a few feet had winded him. Not surprising since the elderly of the two had long since stopped exercising his muscles in terms of training and was acting more like an old politician. This marriage between your daughter and that boy. It is a mistake, said Hiyashi's father with Hiyashi himself sighing again. And how is it a mistake father? The boy has a direct line to the fire daimyo. When he gets older, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto will be one of the most influential people in all of fire country. I would think on a political scale, the Hyuga clan would embrace this idea to further our standing. Instead, you reject it. One would think you are not a patriot of Konoha or fire country as a whole, replied Hiyashi with his father glaring at him. As an elder of the clan, I have to accept this idea, if only for the political reasons behind it. But I also despise the idea of letting that thing mixing with our own pure Hyuga clan blood. He is not worth the filth the branch family cleans off our clan compound floors every day and you know it. I don't care if he is the son of the Yandaimi or the son of the Uzumaki clan heiress. The boy is garbage. He should have been killed the night of his birth and I would have done it myself if I had been given the chance. Stated the elder man while Hiyashi frowned at this since he saw the slightly panic-filled look in his father's eyes. Don't try to hide behind clan lineage and nobility with me father. I know the real reason you fear the boy and Hinata marrying. You along with the other Hyuga elders fear that the boy will one day become a seal master like his parents. You fear he will find a way to free the branch family of the cage bird seal with Hinata influencing him to do it after they marry, remarked Hiyashi with his father's face getting red with anger. The branch family is meant to serve. The main family rules over the Hyuga clan and has since the forming of the clan. The weak have no business being on equal footing as the strong, said Hiyashi's father while Hiyashi himself clenched his teeth and an image of his brother manifested in his mind. Hazashi was far from weak in his mind. If that were indeed true father, then why are you not branded with the cage bird seal for being so weak and filled with fear for the future, remarked Hiyashi before walking away from his stunned and angry father. Chunin exam stadium day of the finals. You all know the rules here. I am the rules. If I give the order to stop fighting, you stop fighting. If you get out line, I'll put you back in line, and I will do it by force. Are we clear? said Naruto while looking at the candidates to be Chunin standing in front of him. Out of all the candidates here, three genin were from Suna, and four were from Konoha. The one Gara killed a month ago to be unlucky participant number eight was dead so he didn't count. Yes, said Tamari while seeing Gara and Konkuro nod while the others did too. In the stands, the fire daimyo sat with his fellow feudal lords, each looking at Naruto in an appraising fashion. They had heard about what he had done for the boy in taking him in and making sure the blonde could handle himself in the face of adversity. To think that someone so young would be the personal harbinger of a daimyo at Naruto's age was what many would think to be unprecedented. But here the boy currently was. Standing in the middle of the arena as the head proctor for the Chunin exam finals, enforcing his own will, and by extension the will of the fire daimyo himself. That boy is something else my friend remarked Suna's wind daimyo while he saw him addressing the Suna ninja before looking at the ones from Konoha. Agreed. Such potential was almost wasted here in Konoha. 
All that abuse they put that boy through was cruel and inhumane, replied the fire daimyo. It makes you wonder what our own shinobi villages are hiding from us with their own jinchuriki, remarked the earth daimyo since he had trusted the sandame Suchikage with running Iwa without his supervision. Though given the abuse Naruto suffered in what was supposed to be the most peaceful of the ninja villages, the earth daimyo wasn't so sure anymore. In fact, the man decided he would make his own personal inquiry in his ninja villages about the two Jinchuriki who resided there after he returned to his nation. At the moment, the Sandame Hokage was preparing to announce the start of the Chunin exams with the K's cage, sitting in a chair beside him. The two shook hands, greeted each other in a friendly manner, and smiled though you couldn't tell with the K's cage, due to the cloth covering his face, at one another. Of course the Sandame knew the man sitting next to him wasn't the actual K's cage, but Orochimaru himself currently in the dead man's robes. They each gave the other a knowing look in the belief their plan would come to fruition and make Konoha great in their own way. As for Orochimaru, one of the reasons he was going along with this little invasion plan his old sensei came up with was become the next Hokage in the aftermath of the attack. Of course, there would be opposition to this violent transition, which was one the Sanin had planned to knock down key targets, and key people within Konoha who would no doubt oppose his future rule over. From certain ninja to various people among the clans in Konoha, who knew just how vile Orochimaru truly was, and would not support him as the new Hokage when the dust cleared with him being victorious over his enemies. Once those individuals were removed, their successors would fall in line, and so would their clans once they realized resistance was futile. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you this year's Chunin exams. Let the matches begin, exclaimed the Sandame with the crowd cheering. It should be me down there. I should be fighting and advancing in rank, exclaimed Sasuke angrily while Kakashi put a hand on his student's shoulder. Calm down Sasuke. You'll get your chance against next time, said Kakashi while he was reading his Ika Ika Paradise book. I don't want a next time, Kakashi sensei. I want my time to be now, demanded Sasuke with Kakashi sighing and eyeing his student slightly to see the Uchiha scowling heavily. We can't always get what we want Sasuke. We just have to deal with the cards dealt to us, advised Kakashi with the Junin seeing Sasuke scowling further. If that were true, the loser down there wouldn't be the head proctor, remarked Sasuke with Kakashi sighing again. One day soon Sasuke, you will learn that not everything can be handed to you, and must be earned through hard work. Your pride is your biggest weakness here. Regardless of what your father may tell you, the Uchiha clan is not invincible. That kind of thinking can get you killed, thought Kakashi while wishing his situation with Sasuke wasn't such a pain in the ass to keep the boy from jumping off the handle because he wasn't chosen for something important at every turn. Sabaku no Tamari vs Nara Shikamaru. Ready. Fight. Exclaimed Naruto with the two getting ready for a fight. Well, Tamari was anyway. Troublesome. Not only do I have to fight first, but I have to fight a girl said Shikamaru to himself, which made Tamari angry at the fact he wasn't taking her seriously because of her gender. I am going to mess him up for that, thought Tamari angrily, as she decided to go for the very direct approach here, and use her still-folded fan as a club to smack the Nara down into the ground. Oh crap, thought Shikamaru, as his eyes widened in shock, and horror at seeing that look in Tamari's eyes that his own mother had when his father did something stupid to tick her off. Come back here and take your beating like a man, exclaimed Tamari, as she saw him moving pretty fast for a usually lazy bum. I am taking my beating like man. A man doesn't take beatings from angry women. He runs from them for as long as possible. Troublesome woman, mumbled Shikamaru, but Tamari heard him all the same, and got even angrier. Troublesome woman, I'm a troublesome woman, I'll give you a troublesome woman. Kamedachi no Jutsu exclaimed Tamari before unleashing her fury in a powerful wind jutsu that sent Shikamaru flying into the wall behind him. Ow, she wins. I give up, mumbled Shikamaru before he slowly fell off the wall and his body imprint for the slightly softer though not by much ground. Winner, Sabaku no Tamari, exclaimed Naruto with most of the crowd booing at how quickly the match ended, Shikamaru for losing, and Tamari for winning. Call me troublesome will you? thought Tamari before giving Naruto a wink and walked away. In the stands, a certain Hyuga girl frowned. 
Abarame Shino vs Sabaku no Konkuro. Both combatants please come down, said Naruto while the puppet user glanced at Shino before looking at his siblings. Proctor I forfeit, declared Konkuro with Shino narrowing his eyes at him. He's saving his strength for something later. But what? Thought Shino curiously while Naruto announced Konkuro lost by forfeit and the winner was the Abarame. Smart move brother, commented Tamari with Konkuro nodding since the siblings and Baki had a major talk following the blonde Kunoichi's talk with Naruto about their father and Kei's cage being a fake. Baki had sent word to one of his most trusted ninja back on Suna to investigate the claim by having one of the ninja patrols move in the area where the coordinates given to them by Naruto though they could not prove it for where the case cage's body was actually located. Sure enough upon getting there, the man's body was found, and stripped of his case cage robes. By this point, the impersonator of the case cage, who was Orochimaru had already left Suna for Konoha under the guise to see the Suna siblings compete in the Chunin exam finals, and prepare the final stages of his invasion plan in secret from within Konoha itself. As things stood, news went to all trusted Junin, and Chunin of Suna partaking in the attack on Konoha about what happened to the actual case cage. Following that, Baki had paid a visit to Naruto in secret the night prior to explain what was going on, and that Suna was once again an ally with Konoha to fight Orochimaru along with the Sanin's sound ninja. As for Naruto, he accepted Baki's announcement of this news well, and told the Suna Junin that the fire daimyo would be speaking to his counterpart in wind to ensure that Suna was not denied any more missions it needed to survive financially. In fact, with the way things were heading, Naruto hinted that the fire daimyo might even decide to send a few missions Suna's way and all of them would be high-ranking high-paying jobs too that Suna would be best suited for. Of course, this was all on the contingent that Suna crushed sound during the attack, and that Orochimaru was crushed. Whether the Sanin escaped with his forces or not wasn't hinged on Suna getting those high-paying missions from the fire daimyo in the future, but Naruto also hinted that to Baki that it couldn't hurt to go that, extra mile, in killing the snake that had been a thorn in everyone's side since the day he went rogue. Even if Suna Ninja didn't personally kill Orochimaru, the fact they crippled his forces would be more than enough to get clients interested in them. Naturally, Baki understood completely with word spreading through the ranks of Suna to kill the snake Sanin Orochimaru on sight during the attack if they encounter him. No exceptions. Gara had a look on his face like his birthday had come early and someone had given him a pile of ninja to kill as a present when he heard the news. For what is soon to come? I'll need all my chakra, and skills in the fighting, whispered Konkuro while Gara was looking eager to fight now. Akamichi Choji vs Rock Lee. Will both contestants please come down, said Naruto with both fighters descending to the arena floor. Both had proven their stuff against what remained of their teams during the preliminaries a month ago when facing other Konoha ninja. Ino fought against Kiba with the latter of the two winning because of Akamaru sneaking up behind the girl when she was about to use her family's mind transfer jutsu before peeing on the platinum blonde's leg. Ino had shriek in anger, complaining about being peed on and had forfeit so she could head to the nearest bathroom or shower to wash off the dog's urine from her leg. Her sensei Asuma just sighed heavily in embarrassment and so did fellow teammates groaning over what she did. Choji had been able to handle himself well against Tenten. The Akamichi had not given the Kunoichi the time to get her weapons ready to launch at him and the body expansion jutsu to turn into a giant human wrecking. As such, when Tenten tried to launch an attack against Choji, she was hit hard by the massive ball of flesh, which sent her to the wall, and knocked the Kunoichi out cold. Naturally, Lee took offense to this loss, and vowed to regain Tenten's lost honor with his flames of youth should he fight Choji in the finals. Tenten herself groaned when she heard this after waking up and smacked Lee upside the head before shaking him in a comical yet violent fashion. Tenten kept going on about how she was not a damsel in distress, didn't need to be saved like one, and intended to beat Lee into the ground when cleared by the medics. And on a side note for Lee, he got more running done for the first week following that little declaration by Tenten than he had in two months prior. Who knew being chased by an angry Kunoichi with a massive club could be so beneficial to training? Yash. I shall win this match in honor of my teammate you defeated a month ago. My flames of youth will not be stopped. Declared Lee passionately while Tenten slapped her head in embarrassment. Why do I have to be the one with the crazy teammate? 
asked Tenton to herself while Guy let out a hearty laugh next to her. Lee is just being Lee my student. Support him in his fight. That is what teammates do, said Guy with Tenton glaring at him between her fingers. If only I hadn't lost in the preliminaries, thought Tenton while inwardly crying anime tears inside knowing this was going to be a while before her sensei and teammate let this go. If at all. Ready. Fight. Exclaimed Naruto while Lee shot forward at high speed with the mission being to win this fight quickly yet gracefully like Guy Sensei taught him. Body expansion jutsu. Exclaimed Choji since he knew Lee was going to charge in right away given his fighting stance and tensing legs. As expected, the blow hit Choji hard, but the massive body expansion as the name of the jutsu implied, the increased mass of the boy was able to absorb most of the blow itself. It still hurt but not as much as it would have without the jutsu being done prior to the hit. As for Choji, he went bouncing back, but quickly recovered before going into a roll, and charging toward Lee head on. Lee seeing this, quickly moved out of the way, waiting for Choji to reverse his direction, and attack again in his giant boulder-like form. To Lee's surprise, Choji bounced himself into the air, returned to normal size, and then proceeded to make his entire right arm become huge before slamming it down with a mighty, crash. That destroyed the landscape in the process. Lee was able to escape of course, but he wasn't about to charge in without assessing his opponent's action, and dodged the giant moving arm heading his way. After dodging two more additional strikes by the Akamichi's giant right arm, Lee surprised Choji by jumping on top of it, then he rushed forward, and with a yell jump kicked the big bone boy right in the face. The hit itself sent Choji flying back, hitting the ground, and bouncing several times before his body impacted against the stadium wall. The poor boy was down and out. Winner! Rock Lee! exclaimed Naruto with the crowd cheering at such a display of skill by both Leaf Genin. In the cage booth, the Sandame Hokage glared at Naruto despite the fact the boy was ignoring it, and him to that extent before glancing over at Orochimaru under the disguise of the K's cage. The time was almost upon them. Soon Konoha would be reborn through the chaos they created in this coming battle. Suna would be disgraced for being seen as backstabbers of their allies, Hiruzen's own successor of his choosing was ironically his very killer in Orochimaru, and soon the fire daimyo would be forced to see things as they were meant to be seen. Once secretly taken away through it all, Yamanaka Fu would do a bit of mental manipulation on the feudal lord's mind before sending him back to his palace after stripping Naruto of the man's protection. Once that happened, the boy could be turned into a proper weapon with Jiraiya's help with some seals, and other means to turning Naruto into an obedient yet dumb weapon. It's almost time my student, whispered Hiruzen with Orochimaru nodding while he was salivating inside at the idea of taking over Konoha while becoming Hokage and gaining a few test subjects with the Sharingan in them. Indeed sensei. Soon we will get what is coming to us, replied Orochimaru since he had plans for Naruto and Sasuke due to their own powers as well as bloodlines. Will both Sabaku no Gara and Sabaku no Tamari come down, said Naruto with Gara doing that, but Tamari not moving an inch. I forfeit, exclaimed Tamari since she didn't want to fight Gara and needed to conserve strength for the invasion. Winner by forfeit is Sabaku no Gara exclaimed Naruto while the crowd booed the Suna Kunoichi since they wanted to see her get hurt. Now, thought Hiruzen before he nodded to Orochimaru, who in turn gave the signal one of his sound ninja given and Konoha Anbu uniform to make it easier to move within the stadium in order to get into position. Kabuto was supposed to do this part, but with his capture after the preliminaries started, and his detainment being so tight that not even the Sandame Hokage could help without it raising suspicion. The fire daimyo had heard of the young boy being a possible spy for sound and had ordered Kabuto be held in highest security based cell in Konoha. The man had also ordered that anyone being ordered to set Kabuto free or be transferred to another cell by anyone were going against the feudal lord's wishes and thus would be arrested for treason against fire country as a whole. This meant that the Hokage could not tell his Anbu watching over Kabuto to let him out or transfer the boy to a new less secure cell in order to provide an escape needed to return to Orochimaru's side. Not only that, but the Hokage was sure any kind of jailbreak would have earned him the fire daimyo's wrath for being incompetent in his job. Possibly ordering the elderly man to step down before the Chunin exams and be replaced with someone else of the feudal lord's choosing. Not that it mattered since in a matter of moments, the trap would be sprung, 
and the fire daimyo would soon learn what it meant to cross, the professor, of Konoha. Soon after the signal was given, the genjutsu fell upon the stadium in the form of white feathers that started putting people to sleep. The civilians fell asleep easily, too stunned in awe, and stupidity to realize they were being put in a trap. An explosion rang out in the cage booth, as the staged fight was about to happen, and Konoha ninja were set to do battle with Suna as well as sound. Only when the trap got to that part, things turned out differently, and not for the better if you were from sound. Suna's forces knew who the sleeper agents from sound were prior to the attack, and struck out as such against their supposed allies for this mission. Konoha was also surprised to see so many Suna ninja in the stadium and even more surprised to see them fighting against sound ninja instead of with them. Several of the Konoha ninja in the stadium had been informed of the invasion by Hiruzen and how Suna was allying with sound. Hiruzen had tried to play it off that the trap being sprung by Orochimaru was going to backfire in his face by using that trap against the Sanin. Only to see it did indeed backfire in more than one way. Several Suna ninja had informed the more confused and wary Konoha ninja about how their case cage had been killed by Orochimaru in order to impersonate the man so he could get close to the Hokage. An action they neither condoned or were going to tolerate anytime soon while intending to make the Sanin's treachery be his undoing. As this was going on, the secret army of samurai of the fire daimyo had smuggled in were joining the battle, and confirmed what the Suna ninja had told them. As such, the samurai had told them to obey the fire daimyo in not only repelling sound, but assisting Suna ninja in fighting them, and there would be severe consequences for any who disobeyed. As for the forces outside of Konoha's walls, Jiraiya was using his small army of large toads the size of horses in battle armor to cut down the large pockets of sound ninja in position to strike. Once the various Suna summoning teams took down the walls with their temporary snake summoning scrolls Orochimaru had provided them, the army of sound ninja would swarm in, kill everyone in sight wearing a Konoha headband, and any of the, specially assigned, targets made known to them. Jiraiya's ambush on them put the kibosh on that. To think you would go so far as to leave scars on this village before you died sensei. Has your mind gone that far off the reservation? Has your will of fire been that corrupted? Have I been corrupted by your way of doing things? Thinking what you think and not what I think? Thought Jiraiya as he had been reflecting on his past actions since Naruto had helped bring several disturbing things to his attention, and made him do a lot of soul-searching. The toads had been a big help there too when he reverse-summoned himself there to seek their guidance, after beating him almost within an inch of his life. You need to realize your shame Jiraiya. Minato would not have wanted his son to suffer for the glory of the village. He wanted both and it was his naive selfishness that caused his only child to suffer for most of his childhood. Remind yourself of him and what he wanted for his son before you listen to an old monkey with delusions of grandeur mixed with greed and lust for power not his own to command. The toads had given Jiraiya this once and only once in a lifetime only chance at possible redemption for himself. If he fucked it up and betrayed Naruto again for whatever stupid reason he came up with, dot the toads were going to fuck him up. Now I can only hope Tsunade can be reached. The death of Dan, Nawaki, and Kashina really hurt the woman. The last one only gave her an easy target to lash out in the form of Naruto. I'll admit, I was the same way for a time, but now. Dot now I know better, and damn do I feel stupid for letting all those years go to waste, thought Jiraiya while crushing the last group of sound ninja while seeing the Suna ninja arrive and surrender the temporary snake summoning scrolls to him. He would need to look into these things later. Konoha Stadium. Naruto cut down a nearby sound ninja with his sword. This was the twentieth death by his hands so far since this invasion started. In the stands, Itachi, Shizune, and Saito were protecting the fire daimyo along with several other daimyos from harm. Knowing they were holding their own in a tight-knit group helped Naruto focus more on the task in front of him. Cutting down one sound ninja after the next with his sword, using one hand signs before slamming onto the ground to hit several with a stone spikes jutsu that impaled his targets. Throwing kanai at several in their blind spots. Saving a nearby junin from being hit in the back despite the fact that same junin might have had a hand in his suffering even if the blonde couldn't remember or recognize the face of the junin he saved. Suddenly, Naruto's senses alerted him to someone from behind, and dodged just in time to avoid a punch aimed at his face. 
Leaping back via a handstand, Naruto saw the fist aimed at him belong to one Senju Tsunade, and it was clear her attempt to hit him was no accident. The woman was out for blood. His blood in fact. Apparently, from what Naruto had learned, the woman forced herself to get over the fear of the crimson liquid that all humans, and most organic creatures on this planet had in their bodies. Tsunade knew that sooner or later she would have to confront her fear, if only to get closer enough to kill Naruto, and prevent him from using it against her. Regardless if he knew the weakness or not. Hold still brat, exclaimed Tsunade while glaring heavily at Naruto. Why, so you can kill me? My mother would be so thrilled to know you're trying to kill her only child, remarked Naruto with heavy sarcasm. You are unworthy of being Kashina's son. Any child who kills their own mother on the night of their own birth doesn't deserve to live. Countered Tsunade with a madness in her eyes now that made Naruto's eyes narrow. Something was wrong here. The woman's eyes were slightly glazed. An almost, hypnotic form of suggestion in them. An influence not her own was in those eyes. Something that was making her go against her actual self and principles. Could Tsunade be, under a genjutsu of some kind? But how? And by who? Do you really believe that line of thinking Tsunade? Or did someone quietly plant that suggestion in your head? Asked Naruto while leaping back while the woman became angry and tried to smash him to pieces with her fists. The madness in her eyes getting stronger. Shut up. I don't have to answer a murderer like you. Exclaimed Tsunade while she kept trying to hit him with one of her super punches. And I don't have to be judged by a woman who would easily betray her grandfather and grandmother in such a profound way by killing a member of their family. Or have you forgotten your grandmother was an Uzumaki? That the Senju were the cousins of the Uzumaki clan. I didn't take you to have the mindset of an Uchiha. Naruto spat back while ducking under one of her punches when she got close and landed a punch of his own into her gut with enough force behind it to send the woman skidding back. You dare accuse me of being like the Uchiha. The Uchiha are scum. Betrayers. They would sooner kill each other if it meant a path to power. Exclaimed Tsunade while the madness in her to seem to shift, turn on itself, and Naruto saw a conflict within her even when she tried to keep fighting. And how is your willingness to betray your kin simply because of something that was not even or the Kyubi's fault any better? What do you think your grandparents would say if they saw you now? Saw the way you acted toward me? How you left me in the care of bigots and hate-filled morons? They would be ashamed you! Exclaimed Naruto, as he got inside her guard one more time, kneed the woman in the stomach before headbutting her hard, and sent Tsunade flying back with a dazed look. Kill Uzumaki Naruto! He took Kashina from you. Kill him in the name of justice. What? What was that? Thought Tsunade while she struggled to focus and wondered if she was hearing things. Kurama, can you see it? She's not herself, thought Naruto with the fox in him nodding. Agreed. She is under a powerful genjutsu. One that attacks the mind and turns the person against those they would normally love. That look is similar too. I don't believe it exclaimed Kurama while Naruto frowned. What? What is it? thought Naruto with the fox growling in anger. I know that look anywhere. That look Tsunade is sporting is similar to my own when I was influenced by the Sharingan. An Uchiha, roared Kurama in anger. An Uchiha, meaning. Dot the Sharingan was involved. But. Dot why would someone do that to her? Who would do that to her? Who could do that to her? thought Naruto with Kurama growling heavier in anger. The list is short. All of who are in the Uchiha clan. Madara could do it of course, but I doubt he ever got close enough to Tsunade if he is still alive. There is also the masked ninja claiming to be him. It could also be any single person within the Uchiha clan. Even Uchiha Itachi, said Kurama with Naruto frowning. Itachi wouldn't do that to us. He may have the Sharingan and is an Uchiha, but the man is not like that thought Naruto with Kurama reluctantly nodding. For an Uchiha, he is indeed a different cut above the rest. A rather bright light in a rather dark clan like the Uchiha. Still, it doesn't mean you should not ask him about this further once we have detained the genjutsu-influenced Senju here. As much as I would like to see her get dragged through the mud figuratively and literally, I would only wish it provided her actions were her own, said Kurama since he knew it would be like blaming him for the entire attack on Konoha after being ripped out of Kashina by the masked Uchiha before the Sharingan I made him go on a rampage. 
Agreed, thought Naruto before refocusing on Tsunade, as the woman clutched her head in pain, and it was clear his headbutting had weakened the genjutsu's hold on her mind. I'm, I'm not like the Uchiha. I'm not. Grandfather. Grandmother. They would be on my side. Wouldn't you? Mumbled Tsunade to herself before she screamed out and fell to the ground while clutching her head in pain. It seems you were correct. She is in pain. The genjutsu her mind is suffering from has been weakened to make her question the actions taken against you in the past. You need to knock her out and get the woman out of here, said Kurama knowing that this woman would be a target if left alone here on the battlefield. Moving swiftly, Naruto hit Tsunade with a chop to the back of her neck, and quickly got her to where the fire daimyo was being protected. At first, the fire daimyo was unsure of why Naruto brought the woman to him, but a brief explanation of what he saw made the feudal lord understand while Itachi frowned, and told those around him that he knew who could have put Tsunade under such a genjutsu. Uchiha Shisui, I will want this dealt with accordingly Itachi. As one of your first duties as the new Hokage of Konoha when this invasion is over, ordered the fire daimyo while Itachi nodded knowing he would want answers too. With Naruto, enjoying yourself I see, commented Naruto to Gara while he unleashed his fury on the sound ninja coming after him. I can't complain Naruto-san. Mother is actually happy right now with the chaos of battle surrounding us, said Gara since Shukaku was indeed quite happy at this moment in its vessel killing so many sound ninja. Glad I could make such a thing reality, replied Naruto before he shifted from using his sword to bow staff and began smashing people's skulls in. My sister is interested in you, remarked Gara offhandedly while Naruto smirked since he figured as much. Gara, you weren't supposed to tell him, exclaimed Tamari while looking away from the two while blushing at her little brother's bluntness on the subject. Why couldn't it be Konkuro who told him? At least she could beat him up for being an idiot. I thought he should know. You weren't exactly forthcoming with your intentions when you first spoke to him, said Gara while Konkuro snickered at Temari's embarrassed and red face. Women don't do that right away, yelled Tamari before lashing out at a group of sound ninja with her fan and wind jutsus that sent them colliding into the arena wall with death being instant upon impact. Really, Konkuro seems to think differently when I questioned him on the matter about you courting the Namikaze, replied Gara while Konkuro looked scared and nervous with Tamari glowering at the puppet master. When this is over Konkuro, I am going to kick, your, dot ass, exclaimed Tamari while she attacked decisively following each of those last three words spoken. I almost wish Gara would go psycho and kill me out of spite, thought Konkuro while he cried anime tears and weeping for his life. His sister was going to beat him up so badly when this was over. What do you think Kurama? thought Naruto with Kurama snorting at this. If there is one thing I will never understand, it is the females of your species. I didn't understand Mito or Kashina back then and I don't understand any of them now, said Kurama with Naruto not disagreeing with him. Elsewhere, Uchiha Sasuke was fighting the enemy sound ninja around him with Kakashi while Sakura did her best to fight when she did. Though it was quite clear the girl had to increase her training regimen and spend time learning from her sensei in various ninja fields. Since her team had been kicked out the chunin exams due to Sasuke, though she would never admit it, the girl had spent most her time trying to getting Sasuke's attention over actual training. Something that Kakashi knew he would have to eventually stamp out of her, provided they all lived through this. Back to Sasuke. The Uchiha himself was scowling since he saw Naruto still in the center of the arena, fighting wave after wave of sound ninja heading his way. It made the boy's pride take a major hit since he didn't think Naruto was worth the effort of so many ninja to kill. Why should they go after the blonde in the first place? He was a nobody. It didn't matter if Naruto was the Yandaimi's son. The man was Hokage for a short time and died sealing the biju into his worthless offspring who only got recognition because of the so-called abuse suffered while in Konoha. Big deal. The Uchiha had a massive history that descended to the time of the Warring Clans era. Even if Naruto was half Uzumaki, it did not mean anything to Sasuke, and apparently the majority of Konoha too if their opinion of the blonde was anything to go by. As the more Sasuke thought about it, the angrier he became at Naruto for being so strong, to have the support and respect of his big brother Itachi. 
Sasuke had longed for the day where recognition from Itachi would mean he was no longer in his older brother's shadow in front of the entire Uchiha clan. Their father would go on and on about, Itachi this, and, Itachi that, while giving Sasuke a bare minimum of support. It was only after Itachi was given the assignment to train and watch over the Yandaimi's son by the fire daimyo himself did the Uchiha clan head focus on his youngest more. At first, Sasuke was very happy that his father was focusing on him more, and praising his youngest for doing so well. That of course changed after wave when Sasuke came to realize that his father was only doing it because Itachi wasn't around to soak up the praise. Sasuke realized that if Itachi had stayed in Konoha, stayed to do missions for the Hokage, their father would keep going on about Itachi, praising the eldest of his two sons, and the youngest would be left in older brother's shadow. That blonde is nothing, a waste of Itachi's time. Itachi should have been training me. Not that blonde fool. Me, thought Sasuke angrily before stabbing one sound ninja in the head with a kunai. Focus Sasuke. I can sense your emotions clearly. Focus on the enemy, said Kakashi while he moved closer to Guy and repel those aimed at his, rival, of sorts. Yes, focus on my enemy, thought Sasuke while his eyes moved from the sound ninja around him to Naruto, who was besting the last of them, and focused on talking to the Suna siblings. It was time to test out his new jutsu that Kakashi had him learn this past month. With Naruto. The sudden sound of birds chirping got Naruto's attention long before he turned around in time to see Sasuke charging at him with a fist filled with lightning. In the stands behind the Uchiha, the boy's sensei had turned his head to look on in shock, and horror at Sasuke now with his Sharingan eyes active. Had the silver-haired man looked at Sasuke's eyes, he would see they were blazing with jealousy and hatred for Naruto while aiming this specific jutsu at the Namikaze. So the little green monster in Itachi's little brother has finally revealed itself. Figures it would be now of all times, thought Naruto while Kurama growled inside his head. I knew it, I knew it, we went to wave to save your father's last remaining student and his genin team simply because Itachi's little brother was on it. Only for us to save a power-hungry fool, who wants to remove you, and by extension me from this world simply because his overinflated ego can't handle the fact someone is better than him exclaimed Kurama angrily while giving Naruto a, I told you so. Look, I know Kurama, but you know I owed Itachi a lot, and I was paying him back in wave by helping him with his little brother. It's not his fault Sasuke is a total asshole, thought Naruto with Kurama growling a little louder. No, I suppose not. Still, I think it's time you emphasized your own superiority over this Uchiha a bit more by making him regret coming at you with this little ball of lightning in his hand remarked Kurama with Naruto nodding and focusing on Sasuke getting closer with the intent of running his right hand through the blonde's chest. Wind style. Tempest shield. Exclaimed Naruto before going through one-handed hand signs before having the back of his index and middle finger pointing upward. The end result was a massive violent wind forming around him like a shield similar to the Hyuga's Kaden, but instead of spinning around physically to cause the rotation, Naruto used his wind affinity to spin the wind itself around him from different directions. It was actually like creating a Rasengan more than a Kaden, but the difference was the wind was spinning around his form in a protective shield-like manner. And it was perfect a case like this when fighting against an attack like the one due to the literal nature of the attack Sasuke was using since wind was stronger than lightning. Not that Sasuke noticed this or even cared. The Uchiha thought he was invincible due to his clan being so old and powerful. That he could simply overpower or that an Uchiha like himself was immune to the rules regarding the elements. Once the lightning-filled hand met the shield of wind spinning around Naruto, the fist was totally destroyed, and upon the two jutsus ending left Sasuke without a hand. Just a nice cauterized, from the residual lightning and even the wind moving so fast to generate heat, stump of a wrist. There wasn't even a blood stain on the ground or any type of remains that was once Sasuke's hand. It took Sasuke a good 10 seconds to realize his hand was gone before screaming out in pain and falling to his knees because of it. The screams from the Uchiha were music to Kurama's ears and Naruto despite not having any ill will toward Sasuke, namely for Itachi's sake, could only look on at the boy with pity. The punishment for attacking a member of the Fire Daimyo's forces was a heavy penalty as it was seen as an attack on the fire daimyo himself, and was not tolerated in the slightest. 
Add to the fact it was a Konoha ninja, regardless of the rank, it was an act of treason, and would only be the final nail on the coffin that was Sasuke's short life. Poor Itachi. Now he will have to figure out how to save his little brother from the fire daimyo though I doubt it will be that simple. Or easy, thought Naruto before knocking the Uchiha out cold with a strike to the head with his bow staff. You didn't kill him, remarked Gara while Naruto smirked at the confused Jinchuriki. Death at this point for him would be too merciful. Trust me, the shame his actions will bring upon his clan will make him wish for death, replied Naruto before he picked up the Uchiha and dropped the boy off in front of Itachi and Shizune. Damn it Sasuke, just like our father, always hating others who are stronger than you, remarked Itachi while sighing heavily at his foolish brother's unconscious form since he had seen what Sasuke had done. I'll leave him here with you. Right now, I have to stop a false martyr make himself out to be a hero, replied Naruto while making a shadow clone and have it go to a corner of the stadium where a special parcel had been placed secretly under a genjutsu for this. It was time to expose the monkey and the snake for the cowards they truly were in life. With the Sandame and Orochimaru, the Hokage and his prized former student had been fighting for some time during the invasion, as they had secretly planned from the start. The overall plan of making Konoha great again revolved around the Sandame Hokage's patriotic act of heroism in repelling his enemy, dying an honorable death at the hands of Orochimaru, and in his last act as a wonderful Hokage of Konoha. Forgive the Sanin for his betrayals. Forgive his former student and in one last decree, he would make Orochimaru the next Hokage to further enforce his forgiving nature to ensure peace could follow the near destruction of the Leaf Village. That Orochimaru would be able to protect Konoha from his new position and be able to make the village stronger with his brilliant mind. Orochimaru for his part would play the grieving student of course, fooling both Jiraiya, and Tsunade with his act of having a revelation over his past actions. It would take some time and a bit of convincing, but Orochimaru was sure he could get them to forgive his actions in killing the Sandane. Going so far as to name Tsunade and Jiraiya his advisors while kicking Serutobi's old teammates out in the process, providing key pieces of harsh evidence conveniently found of them doing things against the Hokage's back, but with plans to assist Danzo in the overthrowing of the Sandane. With many on the councils giving Konoha and Fire Country as a whole a mean black-eyed you to their actions against the Kayubi Jinchuriki, it wouldn't be that hard on the Sanin's part to succeed in kicking many of the old, some quite literally, guard out of their seats of power. And on to the executioner's block. By the time everything calmed down, Orochimaru would have the loyalty of Konoha majority, Donzo's root since he was once a member of it himself, and manipulate things where an Uchiha dies on a mission before acquiring one of their eyes to have transplanted into his own like Hitaki Kakashi. With his ability to jump from body to body, it would go a lot easier in perfecting his research with such a dojutsu under his command, and could easily transplant it into each new body. That had been the plan at the time. But now, now things had changed. The plan was imploding from the inside with the sound ninja below taking heavy losses against Konoha and Suna ninja. Evidence, circumstantial as it may be in their conspiracy that they could do to salvage it was to fight each other so they could make the people believe in giving them a clean slate. One given upon death of the Hokage and the other upon killing said Hokage of Konoha. It's time Orochimaru. Let's see if you can defeat your old master in battle, remarked Hiruzen with a smirk on his face that Orochimaru mimicked. As you are now sensei, it won't be too much of an issue for me. Had we faced each other ten years ago, perhaps I would be concerned, but while you have aged, and lived in such an old body. I have never felt younger, replied Orochimaru while bringing about the Edo Tensai to summon the three Hokages to the forefront of battle only to get two out of the three Hokages with the third coffin collapsing. It may have cost Orochimaru two of his subordinates, but he thought it was worth it, and the two that were used to bring about the return of two of the three Hokages were mere underlings. No real value. The third one was the same as the other two, but why the third coffin didn't work was a bit confusing to the snake Sani. Oh well. Summoning two out of three Hokages back to the land of the living wasn't bad. Not perfect but still pretty good. We are alive. How? asked Senju Hashirama while his brother Tobarama looked behind him to see Orochimaru. He summoned us, remarked Tobarama while seeing the Sanin grinning. Your student. My sensei wants to die a warrior's death. What better way to die than to be slain by his two predecessors? 
replied Orochimaru while grinning at Hiruzen since this was what they planned for their fight. It seems even after our time in this world is over, there is still conflict, and war between the different nations, remarked Tobarama with a sigh before hearing a laugh coming from the third coffin before the front was kicked out and a blonde figure stepped out. The jutsu failed. How did the yandaimi come out of it? thought Orochimaru since he only saw a sliver of blonde hair before seeing the figure get out of the coffin and saw the sandame scowling. The blonde-haired figure in question wasn't the yandaimi Hokage at all. Rather, it was his son Namakaze Uzumaki Naruto. It's hardly a war between nations Tobarama-sama. More like the ambitions of the greedy, the cruel, and the stupid. With these two bakas here at the heart of it in the very village you and your brother founded, said Naruto with Orochimaru looking shocked, confused, and angry at seeing the brat here while Hiruzen just looked angry. What do you mean young one? asked Tobarama curiously at the boy. Don't listen to him. He seeks to destroy the village from within. Already he has turned the fire daimyo against Konoha with his lies. Exclaimed Hiruzen in the hopes it would make his two predecessors think twice before listening to Naruto. You did that yourself. After all, it was through you that the Uzumaki clan is no longer recognized in Konoha's history books as one of the key clans of the world much less an important one in this village, countered Naruto while standing in between the first two Hokages and the Sandane. What? Is this true Hiruzen? Axed Hashirama while Hiruzen scowled at Naruto. Of course it is. He even told people in Konoha about the Kayubi being sealed inside of me by my own father. Minus the fact my father was the Yandaimi Hokage at the time. He even gave the one pale-faced child molester behind you that is Orochimaru access to the forbidden scroll of sealing to bring you two back from the dead, replied Naruto with Orochimaru scowling at the insult. What? Mito's clan is not in Konoha's history books. What about their sealing skills? The whirlpool symbol on the vests of the Junin is a sign of friendship. Of our alliance, asked Hashirama while Naruto raising an eyebrow at the Junin vest part. No, nothing. I only learned about my clan through the fire daimyo and only because he knew my mother, who was the previous Jinchuriki before me, remarked Naruto with the two Hokages looking shocked by this. So your mother took over for Mito. But what about the Uzumaki clan? Aren't they still around? Axed Hashirama while Naruto shook his head. Officially, the Uzumaki clan has been declared close to near extinction since the end of the Second Shinobi War. They scattered throughout the elemental countries. I found one of them a short while ago and she is safe, answered Naruto while Hashirama looked like his heart was about to break. You mentioned these two here were a part of something connected to greed, cruelty, and stupidity. Explain that to us said Tobarama while he locked eyes with Hiruzen to see the man was not able to look back. As much as I would like for the boy to reveal things to you, I think it would be best if we continue on with what needs to be done, remarked Orochimaru with sealing tags in his hands. Why, afraid to boast your so-called brilliant plan to the past Hokages? Is it because the said plan is blowing up in your face beyond this barrier? Because you don't want them to hear how your sensei plotted to turn me into a submissive weapon and spit on their vision of Konoha. How he betrayed the will of fire for power. Betrayed every conviction for the pursuit of power. Mocked Naruto with Orochimaru's face becoming a sneer. Enough. Time to kill. Said Orochimaru before put the kanai with seal tags on them into the heads of the former Hokages. But before he could give them command while the seals restored their bodies, Naruto was already in action with seals of his own, which he slapped onto the chest of both Hokages, which spread throughout their bodies before converging to their heads. Frowning at this action, Orochimaru makes a hand sign, and mentally commands both former Hokages to attack the blonde. Only for to see neither Senju was obeying him. Like it. When we caught your spy Kabuto, we made him tell Ibiki and anko everything while giving the Hokage a false report on our findings. We kept certain things out of it to ensure you believed we didn't know everything while giving the real report to the fire daimyo. Kabuto may be a good spy and right-hand man, but the problem with that, is he knew many key aspects of your grand plan with the old monkey behind me. Including the tags with seals on them to control Senju Hashirama and Senju Tobarama after summoning them using the Edo Tensai. So I had an army of shadow clones lock themselves into the clan library and learn everything they could about seals within the month prior to this moment. 
While I have a ways to go to be at the level of a seal master, I was able to come up with seals that converged over their intended target, and nullify certain aspects of the seal tags you put in their skulls to control them, replied Naruto with Orochimaru looking shocked by this. And by certain aspects, you mean Orochimaru's ability to command them after they were fully rejuvenated, deduced Hiruzen with Naruto turning his head back to glare at the Sandane. Naturally you idiot. If the two most powerful Hokages are going to be brought back to life, if only temporarily, I would prefer they spend that time having the ability to act on their own, and think for themselves. Orochimaru here can no more command them to do anything than you can old monkey, replied Naruto with Hiruzen scowling at him. Thank you young one. Clearly you have the blood of an Uzumaki in your veins if your skills with sealing are this good. Mito would be so proud to know her clan is still alive in some aspects despite everything, said Hashirama with a smile before it became a scowl and aimed his eyes at Hiruzen. Indeed. I think it's time we remind these whelps our power and show them the might of true Hokages, remarked Toborama while turning to glare at Orochimaru, who felt a cold shiver crawl up his spine. Mind if I join you? I am family after all, said Naruto with Hashirama and Toborama glancing at each other. Are you sure you can keep up? You are facing our old student and his own in this fight, asked Hashirama with Naruto smirking at the question before slowly drawing his sword and went into his Gatosu sword stance to the shock of the others around him. The stance of a samurai, thought the three Hokages plus Sanin. I think the real question here Hashirama-sama, is can you two old formerly dead cages keep up with me? Remarked Naruto with a smirk on his face while both former Hokages smirked back at the challenge. Let's find out, replied Toborama, as he wasn't about to have this youngster outdo him. Agreed. Hiruzen is mine, said Hashirama while getting ready to fight the Sandane. Same. I owe that man a lot of years for causing me pain and with interest since he tried to manipulate me into being Konoha's weapon long after I returned under the command of the Fire Daimyo said Naruto while aiming his weapon at Hiruzen. You ungrateful little brat, you wouldn't have lived to the age of three if it weren't for my position as Hokage. Exclaimed Hiruzen while Hashirama frowned and Naruto just smirked. Perhaps, but you weren't really trying to protect me so your little proclamation means nothing, replied Naruto while Hiruzen scowled further. Come snake, let us see if you are as talented as my idiot student claims you to be when fighting someone of my caliber remarked Toborama to the now scared Orochimaru. Tempting, but no, I am going to flee to fight another day, preferably one without you to stop me, remarked Orochimaru before ordering his bodyguards to lower the barrier. Of course before they could follow through with it, Toborama was in front of Orochimaru in a span of a second, and punched the Sanin right in the gut. The force behind launched the pale man right off his feet, gasping for air, and coughing up blood seconds later. As for Toborama, he wasn't done by a long shot, as he launched punch after punch, kick after kick, and broke bone after bone in the Sanin's body. While his brother may be the better taijutsu specialist between them, it was only a marginal difference at best. Toborama also knew that the Sanin in front of him was a threat to the world just from his appearance alone and the way he talked around you. That evil-looking smile Orochimaru had earlier didn't help either. To the sides, the Sanin's bodyguards ended the barrier, and swarmed over Toborama in the hopes they could save their master. Only for him to vanish from their sight and take them all down four seconds later with one body per second before refocusing on the now bloodied Orochimaru. The Sanin shed his body to bring about being fully healed, but it took quite a bit out of him, and was panting heavily from its use. The means to summon the Edo Tensai required a lot of chakra, as it did when summon anything regardless of what was being called, and given he summoned two Hokages along with restoring his body back to normal physical health, he was pretty well drained. Water style. Water compression bullets jutsu. Exclaimed Toborama at the Sanin, who found himself flying back with multiple holes in his chest area. And again the Sanin shed his skin to be physically healthy again though clearly drained of chakra in the process. You won't beat me Toborama. You may have been Hokage in your time, but someone such as yourself will never be able to kill someone like me. I am a mortal. I am a god, exclaimed Orochimaru, as he launched the Kusanagi blade from his mouth, aiming for the former Hokage's head in order to destroy it, and the seal tag inside to, kill, his former puppet where he now stood. Sadly, for the Sanin anyway, 
the blade missed Tobarama due to the man tilting his head away, and was upon Orochimaru within seconds. Before the pale-faced missing Nin could do anything, much less blink in surprise at his surprise attack missing its target, Tobarama grabbed as much of the poison-covered blade, it didn't matter given the state of his body, while still in the Sanin's mouth, and pulled the sword right out. Since the second Hokage was already super strong, ripping it out of Orochimaru's mouth, plus the man's tongue with it was not a problem, and now had the legendary weapon in his hand. As for ninja on the ground in front of him, Orochimaru was bleed out of the mouth, his chakra spent, and had none left for any jutsu or trick in his arsenal. His bodyguards were down and had no one to provide him with an escape route. Kabuto was captured, locked in a dark cell so tight not even his old sensei or even Danzo could spring his agent from it. WSKT. WSKT. Pleaded Orochimaru with the words clearly being, wait. Wait. If what Tobarama deciphered correctly about his garbled words. No. I won't. I know what they say about snakes and it holds true for you Orochimaru. If I give you an inch, you will take a mile. Clearly my stupid former student has given you a mile and you have taken far more. I will not be so merciful or naive as he was in letting a piece of filth like yourself live, remarked Tobarama before stabbing the Sanin in the chest, knowing the poison would soon spread through the pale man's body, but in the off chance his target had found a way to become immune to it. Cutting off the legs next, Tobarama heard the gurgled screams of the Sanin and they only intensified when the former second Hokage slice into the arms up to the shoulders so they split right down the middle. All Orochimaru could do was cry out in pain, as the former dead cage standing above him sliced, diced, and slowly chopped up his body while the poison from the blade made any form of regeneration impossible. Tobarama then proceeded to stab Orochimaru in the chest several times before finishing up with a beheading, and stabbing Kusanagi right through the head. He was leaving no chance of the Sanin surviving this ordeal. Meanwhile, as for Hashirama and Naruto, they found themselves working surprisingly in sync with each other despite working together for the first time in what would possibly be the only time they would work together. Hashirama met his student first, being the faster one between the two of them, and open palm struck the Sandame Hokage right in the gut with the force behind it sending the elderly man flying back. Not to be outdone by the Shodaim Hokage himself, Naruto leapt over Hashirama, using the man's back as a springboard actually, and descended his blade down to strike Hiruzen's upper chest area. The Sandame dodged the attack, followed by several other sword strikes the blonde sent his way before leaping away and quickly summoning Enma the Monkey King to become his ever-trusty adamantine staff. From there, Hiruzen blocked the sword strikes, and the taijutsu skills of his former sensei while Enma himself talked into his ear about how his past sins were coming back to claim him. Hiruzen for his part scowled at the mention of his actions being sinful and being judged by his own summons for what he did in the past as the Sandame Hokage. Sure he betrayed his late successor. Manipulated events so the boy in question would suffer and be submissive to the whims of the village. But it was for the greater good. The boy's life was meant to be sacrificed so Konoha could prosper and the Sandame had saw fit to make sure it happened like that for the first part of Naruto's childhood. That was the purpose and destiny of a Jinchuriki after all. Hashirama, Tobarama, and Minato had all been naive in believing Jinchuriki should be treated as people. As equals. Jinchuriki were weapons. Weapons had no rights. No say at what was going to happen to them when growing up. Their purpose was to fight and to die for their village no matter how they were raised or trained. How could you do it Hiruzen? How could you betray all that I have taught you? Axed Hashirama before knocking Enma out of the old cage's hands grabbed him by the throat while holding him there. Konoha needs to be strong. As such, I had to trim branch. Remove obstacles that would make Konoha weak. Certain allies who I felt needed to be removed back then in the event they learned of my plans for Konoha's future. Starting with your wife's clan. I betrayed the Uzumaki clan during the Second Shinobi War when they axed us for aid because I wanted Konoha to have exclusive rights to Kyubi. We had Mito's replacement so I saw no real need to help them knowing if I did, they would have survived, and demanded that Kashina return with Kyubi. I couldn't allow that. Konoha had to remain the strongest and the Uzumaki clan threatened to take everything they gave the village away if we did not follow through with the request at the time. 
I stalled for months on end while the war continued to escalate and knew the longer it lasted the harder it was for them to demand anything from us. When the Uzumaki clan fell, I set things in motion to slowly remove the Uzumaki clan from the history books and records of Konoha. Even the old Uzumaki clan mask shrine has been in decline following Kashina's time in Konoha. Our village is the strongest because of my actions Hashirama. The will of fire is stronger and burns stronger than ever through me in my actions. I regret nothing nor am I ashamed of my actions, said Hiruzen while the former Shodime scowled heavily and landed multiple hard hits to older man's torso. Stronger. Konoha is weak. Weaker than it has even been before my death. I can feel it even as I feel anger in my heart. You twisted everything that made Konoha great during my time as Hokage and that of my brother's reign into something cruel. You turned the will of fire from one of purity to a dark and vile blackness matched only by Uchiha Madara's black flames he could launch from his Sharingan eyes. You are not worthy of being Hokage, stated Hashirama angrily and saw Hiruzen was showing anger back at him in return. I am more than worthy. I endure countless battles, survived three shinobi wars, and lost countless friends in the process. My own wife died at the hands of Kayubi on the night when the Uzumaki brat was born. You have no right to judge me sensei. Hiruzen in an angry tone before kicking the man in the face with a flip kick. Serutobi Hiruzen, your head belongs to me, yelled Naruto, as he was laying in way in the event the old cage tried to get free from Hashirama's grip and was not surprised when it happened. Channeling quite a bit of chakra to his legs, Naruto readied himself with his ever-deadly Gatosu stance, knowing he would have one chance to strike if and when Hiruzen broke free. When the event did happen, Naruto struck with an intense speed born from training, and chakra in his legs to give him the extra boot needed to attack. His sword outstretched, extending his reach, and catching the Sandame Hokage off guard. Squelch. While the sword did pierce the target Naruto was aiming for, it didn't pierce the old cage's skull like he hoped, but rather hit Hiruzen dead center in the chest. The impact from the attack sent the Sandame Hokage skidding back, grabbing the sword with both his hands, and spitting out blood in the process. Breaking the sword with both his hands, Hiruzen kicked the boy away while falling to his knees. Damn you boy, you are troublesome as your mother, exclaimed Hiruzen angrily. Thank you, I try to be when it comes to assholes like you, replied Naruto while the old cage tried to stand despite his current injury. You really that think my death will be the end of things brat? You have no idea of the dangers lurking outside of this village. Waiting to attack you once I am gone. I am the only thing keeping them back. The only thing keeping you safe from their wrath. From their fury. Exclaimed Hiruzen angrily with Naruto scoffing. Your definition of safe leaves a lot of room for improvement. Remarked Naruto while walking toward the downed Hokage. And your lack of appreciation for what I have done since you were born is insulting. It is because me that you lived as long as you have. It is through me that the village did not kill you within an hour following your birth. Countered Hiruzen while Naruto scowled at him. It was because of you I was hated. It was because of you I suffered. It was because of you that my mother's clan is scattered to the four corners of the world. It was because of you that my mother's clan has been removed from Konoha and no one knows anything about them. Naruto shot back and grabbed the helmet-covered head of the injured third Hokage and let you become too powerful to control. Let the village love you rather than hate you like it has always been with Jinchuriki. Bah, your life was meant to be controlled and you will be controlled one way or another long after I am gone. Hiruzen shot back before spitting blood in Naruto face. Wrong. First, Uzumaki Mito along with my mother were never hated for what they held by those select few who knew the truth. Second, my life was never meant to be controlled by the likes of you and those that think like you do. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And as captain of that soul, I will not have it usurped by some old, over-the-hill fool seeking to have his legacy of betrayal, greed, and lust for power live on even after his death. Exclaimed Naruto before stabbing Hiruzen in the throat with his broken sword and watched with a measure of satisfaction at seeing the Sandame Hokage die by his hands. I shame to see our student fall the way he did, remarked Hashirama with Tobarama nodding. I am still a bit surprised we are still standing after I killed this one behind us, remarked Tobarama since he knew the Edo Tensai was supposed to end their returned existence once the summoner was killed. 
My seal was responsible for that. When I designed it knowing what Orochimaru had in mind, the seal spread through your body, and essentially performed a override regarding the who part of the person sustaining you after being summoned, replied Naruto with the two senju looking impressed. So instead of my student's student being the anchor for us being summoned, it was you through your seal tag spreading the sealing formula over our bodies, surmised Tobarama with his tone of voice clearly showing he was impressed. Exactly. I knew that if you were given the ability to move about freely, one of your main targets would be Orochimaru. But if you killed him first before we got to the old monkey here, your bodies would collapse, and I would be facing him all alone. I may be good, but the old monkey would have used his years of experience to defeat me in the end. Not to mention the number of Konoha ninja he has who are loyal to him and would intervene on his behalf, commented Naruto before getting a grasp on the broken sword lodged in the dead cage's chest and pulled it out knowing it could be repair. And your skills aren't even a considered master level yet, questioned Hashirama since the ingenious behind the seal used on him and his brother was worthy of being called work done only by a master. Not yet. I'm currently using shadow clones in waves to study them for roughly the past month since my enemy's plan required seals be used to counterattack. I need to use such a skill more in the field and continue to dive deeper into the theory of sealing before I can consider myself a proper seal master, replied Naruto with Hashirama looking impressed by the boy's stance on things and Numido would be proud. And what will you do now young one? Can you free us from the Edo Tensai or are we to live once more in this state? Asked Tobarama knowing that Naruto could, in theory mind you, could have the power to control them in some aspect and held Konoha in his hands. Good question, but before I answer I would rather hear what you want to do. Do you want to stay a little longer among the living? Or return to the land of the dead? Asked Naruto with Hashirama and Tobarama looking at each other. Konoha is in bad shape brother. We should stay around long enough to see it get set back on track said Hashirama with Tobarama thinking things over and nodding. Agreed. We should remind these people and its shinobi what the will of fire truly is and not what our idiot of a former student claims it to be in his eyes, replied Tobarama since he had a feeling it was more than just Hiruzen involved in this little plot to pervert Konoha to their liking. Plus, I need to see Tsunade-chan. I imagine she is all grown up. I wonder how she is doing. Remarked Hashirama while Naruto looked pensive and Tobarama scowled. What's wrong? From the look on your face, we are about to see if not hear something about Tsunade we will not like, stated Tobarama with Naruto nodding. Yeah, you are and it's not pretty, said Naruto before he explained his life to them, how Tsunade was supposed to be his godmother, but didn't commit to her duties, and only just recently did he suspect foul play at the hands of an Uchiha from the Uchiha clan. I warned you the Uchiha could not be trusted brother. They have always been hateful of us no matter how many times you give them leeway. Exclaimed Tobarama angrily while Hashirama slumped his head in a form of depression. Actually Uchiha Itachi has been helping me greatly when called upon and has shown he embraces your version of the will of fire. The fire daimyo is so impressed with him that Itachi is to be made the next Hokage following Hiruzen's death or retirement, remarked Naruto both Senju being shocked by this news. What? But the Uchiha clan will use him. Protested Tobarama while Naruto shook his head no. Itachi is not like the rest of his clan Tobarama-sama. In fact, he knows of the Uchiha I suspect used a genjutsu on Tsunade to make her turn against me. I know you have some measure of distrust against the Uchiha clan, but Itachi is not like them, and meet with the man to judge whether or not he is worthy. I think you will quite impressed, countered Naruto with Hashirama and Tobarama looking at one another before nodding. Very well. I will meet with this Uchiha though I doubt one from such a clan will impress me in being worthy of becoming Hokage, remarked Tobarama with Naruto smirking at him. Shall we? There are still plenty of sound ninja left and seeing you two fighting will no doubt quickly force them all into submission, stated Naruto before gesturing to all of the fighting still going on around them. Agreed. First, we kill the pest attacking from without, before we handle the infestation attacking Konoha from within, remarked Tobarama before he and his brother leapt into the air toward Konoha's streets. They had work to do. Now I just hope Saito Sensei will forgive me for breaking my sword in battle. I'm going to need something stronger. Maybe a visit to Iron Country is in order, 
thought Naruto since he knew from his own history lessons that Iron Country was filled with some of the strongest samurai around and could make some of the finest swords in all the world. He would just have to wait and see. Chapter 7 The Transition The battle was over. It had been over for quite a few days, but the aftermath of it was no less impacting. With Orochimaru dead, his forces captured or killed, things within the village were much better than if Suna had stayed the course of siding with the Sani. Of course the reason for that not happening was all due to one person and one person only the people of Konoha had to thank for it. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. The harbinger of the fire daimyo. Naturally, the majority of the people would never thank the boy, much less admit it was because of his actions that Konoha wasn't worse off with a few damaged buildings, and a few deaths. When the two former Hokages of Konoha suddenly appeared to aid in the fighting off of its enemies. Many assumed the Sandame had something to do with it, and praised the announced dead Hokage for making what they had believed was the ultimate sacrifice to bring them back. Before their beliefs on the matter were violently shattered when Hashirama and Toborama told them what really happened in the fight between Hiruzen and Orochimaru. Of course denial was the first reaction many had, denouncing Naruto in his assistance in defending Konoha, and even calling for his death for being the one responsible for killing the third soon after Orochimaru died. Naturally, they were ignored by the fire daimyo, who was overseeing the transition of who would be the new Hokage. Danzo had tried to sneak himself into the role by having a small talk with the daimyo and stating why he should take over for Hiruzen due to their differences in how things should be run in Konoha. Naruto had been there of course and had stated having ninja as mindless drones with the Hokage being their overall brain of a commander just made the leader of the village an even bigger target. Not to mention that Danzo himself was roughly the same age as Hiruzen while the other cages from the other villages, with the exception of the Tsuchikage, and the late Kei's cage, since he was now dead, were all young men in the prime of their lives. Besides, Danzo's attempt to become the next Hokage was already invalid on itself since the fire daimyo had already decided, and stated Itachi would be the Gondaim Hokage. Something that made Danzo, Homura, and Kaharu very unhappy when they were told this news. The Uchiha clan was ecstatic of course since one of their own got what they felt was always meant to be theirs since the days when Uchiha Madara was alive and part of the village. From their point of view, it was about damn time they got one of their own in the seat of power. Speaking of the Uchiha clan, the two Senju brothers finally met Uchiha Itachi at Naruto's request since Toborama was skeptical about the young man being worthy of the hat. The second Hokage was surprised to see such a humble Uchiha who clearly did not have the arrogance of his clan, and clearly embraced the will of fire like they had tried to pass down to the next generation. As for Hashirama, he was happy someone from the Uchiha clan was chosen to become the next Hokage. The former Shodaim Hokage remembered how he had an argument with Toborama regarding the Uchiha clan being untrustworthy prior to Madara going rogue, and even telling his brother that Madara would succeed him as Hokage upon his death. Only for Madara to hear this and leave Konoha, which led to Hashirama following, and fighting the man at what was now called the Valley of the End. After talking things over with the Uchiha prodigy, both former Hokages believed Itachi was indeed worthy of the title of Hokage of Konoha, and wished him many long years of prosperity during his time running the village. Unfortunately, that was the good part of the transition for Itachi becoming Hokage, and soon had to deal with the bad. Namely his predecessor's little nest of vipers he kept close enough to use, but kept away just enough to avoid being bitten by them. Konoha Hospital at the moment. Naruto was walking beside Uchiha Itachi and being flanked on either side by Hashirama and Toborama while in the hospital. They were here for the purpose of seeing one Senju Tsunade and getting to the bottom of their current investigation regarding the woman's genjutsu-enhanced betrayal of the Senju clan's beliefs. Many gave them a wide berth as they headed for the intended room where the woman was resting. Only to be stopped by two Anbu ninja guarding the room. Sorry sir, but you cannot enter, said one Anbu in an emotionless tone. On whose authority? asked Naruto with a frown since only one person had it and he wasn't here with him. The new Gondaim Hokage of Konoha. Shimura Danzo, replied the second Anbu in an equally emotionless tone. Shimura Danzo is not the new Hokage. I am, stated Itachi while the two Anbu said nothing for a moment. All the same, we have orders to keep anyone not authorized to enter out of the room until ordered, said the first Anbu while Naruto's eyes narrowed. 
Even if Danzo becoming the new Hokage was remotely true, then you would know that I cannot be impeded by him. My rank as the daimyo's harbinger is higher and as such you will let us all pass on my order alone. Or do the two of you wish to be arrested on the grounds of treason? Challenged Naruto with both Anbu glancing at each other. Danzo-sama's orders are absolute as the one true Hokage. We do not recognize you or your authority, stated the second Anbu while slowly moving his hand for a kanai and his partner doing the same. Only for both Anbu guards to be knocked down by the two Senju brothers. Getting even more suspicious, Naruto opened the door to the hospital room, and saw Danzo was there with another Anbu near Tsunade. The said Anbu had a sealing brush and ink in hand while Danzo watched with a sense of satisfaction on his face, until he saw Naruto with the others beside him. I ordered no one to enter without my permission. What are you four doing here? Asked Danzo while Naruto snapped his fingers and sent the two former Hokages to work. One knocked the Anbu out and the other pinned Danzo to the wall with an iron grip on the old Warhawk's throat. First, you have no right to question me about why I am here Danzo. I outrank you in just about every aspect of life. Second, you have no right to command Anbu to keep me, or the rightful Hokage appointed by the fire daimyo himself out of this room. And third, what were you doing here with this Anbu holding that sealing brush? Countered Naruto before walking over to Tsunade and examined the woman with a currently incomplete seal on her forehead. I do not have to answer to you boy. I am the Gondime Hokage no matter what the fire daimyo says. I am the only one qualified to be the leader of this village, replied Danzo before gagging under Tobarama's grip. You never did learn to stop reaching for something when it was out of your reach brat, remarked Tobarama while Naruto continued to examine the seal on Tsunade. What were you doing to my granddaughter? Demanded Hashirama to the Anbu, but all he got was silence in the end. Don't bother Hashirama-sama, the Anbu is clearly from root. They have seals on their tongues to keep them silent when interrogated by anyone seeking information they might know about their mission or about Danzo, said Naruto while seeing what the seal was meant to do once completed. It was Genjutsu reinforcement seal. Do you need help removing the seal? Axe Itachi while Naruto shook his head no. No. I just have to wipe it off. It's incomplete. This seal was clearly designed to reinforce the genjutsu someone put on Tsunade years ago. Meaning Danzo knows who put the genjutsu on her in the first place and was trying to make sure it stayed on in case it was ever discovered by us. No doubt done to prevent it from being broken, replied Naruto before wiping it off the woman and turned to face Danzo. You dare to that to my family. You have some nerve brat, exclaimed Tobarama while Hashirama snapped the next of the anbu he held in his hand and tossed the body aside. I have every right. The position of Hokage was to be mine. It would have been mine. All I had to do was ensure Orochimaru killed Hiruzen, then I moved in to kill him to become Konoha's hero, and in the chaos of it all I would make Tsunade seem incapable of taking the seat knowing Jiraiya would turn it down. I could have convinced the fire daimyo I am the only one capable of taking the position of Hokage to mold in my image, replied Danzo with Tobarama now looking livid at this betrayal. Under what right do you believe the title of Hokage should be yours? Asked Tobarama with Danzo gagging under the former Hokage's tight grip. The fact I have survived three shinobi wars. I have done everything in my power to protect Konoha from the shadows. Killing our enemies left and right crushing future enemies before they become our enemies. I have fought to make our village the most powerful of all the shinobi villages and I deserve what rightfully belongs to me for my years of loyal service, explained Danzo before he was punched violently in the gut by Tobarama. You will never be worthy of becoming Hokage. I was told all about your actions since Hashirama and myself departed this world Danzo. Turning ninja into emotionless drones who obey only you and your commands while killing everyone who thinks differently from you. Such actions are not someone worthy of being called the Hokage of Konoha. They are the actions of a narrow-minded tyrant. Stated Tobarama while Danzo scowled further. Your ways are done Tobarama sensei. Such views died with you a long time ago, said Danzo before he was hit again by the former second Hokage. Our ways may be over Shimura Danzo, but I will not allow yours to continue either, countered Tobarama before being thrown to the ground. I will take him to Ibiki and inform of his actions. I leave your mission to free Tsunade from her madness in your capable hands Itachi, 
remarked Naruto before putting chakra cuffs on the old man and forced the war hawk to stand. Of course Naruto. Just be careful. Danzo has allies everywhere in the village, replied Itachi while watching the scowling old war hawk being forced out of the room by Naruto. To think Konoha has fallen so far since our time, remarked Hashirama while gazing at his granddaughter now with sorrow. It is not your fault brother. We left a foundation to build from, but left it in the hands of those who did not know how to maintain, or properly building from it. We have a chance now to correct the mistakes left following our death and with a competent Hokage now in the form of an Uchiha. What a world we have come to see upon our return from the land of the dead, replied Toborama while seeing Itachi activate his eyes while staring at the Senju woman. You need to wake her up. It seems to be tied to her being awake, said Itachi, as he did not see the possible genjutsu that Naruto suspected was cast on her, and was what made the woman reject the boy as her godson. With Hashirama nodding, he slowly shook his granddaughter awake, and could only smile at the sight of seeing the seemingly innocent face of his child's child awaking up. To see Tsunade become a full-grown woman in her own right despite everything that had happened to her in life and with this genjutsu possibly corrupting her mind. Grandfather. W what are you doing here? Where am I? Asked Tsunade, as she sat up, and looked around to see her granduncle along with Uchiha Itachi with his eyes active. Hello Tsunade-chan. You've grown up to become a beautiful woman. Just like I had hoped, replied Hashirama before giving Tsunade a hug. I missed you. I'm so glad you are here. But. Dot how are you here? How is granduncle here too? Asked Tsunade while confused by this and saw Itachi frown. Strange. The signs of a genjutsu being placed on Tsunade are indeed there, but it seems to be lying, dormant as if there was a specific trigger involved and needed to bring that hatred for Naruto out. I wonder, thought Itachi while watching the woman closely. We were originally brought back by your former teammate Orochimaru to fight your former sensei and our former student Hiruzen. But things quickly changed with the help of someone unexpected from Mito's clan, answered Toborama while Tsunade frowned. Grandmother's clan, who are you? Wait. You mean. Dot him. That demon brat. Axed Tsunade angrily while Hashirama frowned, Toborama scowled, and Itachi narrowed his eyes. As I thought, the trigger for the genjutsu only activates when Naruto is mentioned in some shape or form, thought Itachi while watching the woman's face getting angrier with each passing second. How can you say that Tsunade? He is family. On your grandmother's side, how can you betray her and the Uzumaki clan? Questioned Hashirama while Tsunade looked at him in shock and even greater anger. Kashina is dead because of him. Mito entrusted her with Kayubi and was like a daughter to me. When that brat was born, she died at the hands of the fox that would have stayed in her had Naruto not been born. Exclaimed Tsunade with Hashirama shaking his head. You know that is not true Tsunade. Your blind hatred for the boy is misplaced and goes against our clan's ways, said Toborama while Tsunade glared at him. He is a monster. He robbed me of Kashina. My surrogate daughter. I will not tolerate his existence, exclaimed Tsunade angrily while Itachi's eyes began spinning. The genjutsu surrounding Tsunade is getting stronger. The more people challenge her about Naruto, the angrier she gets, and furthers her anger to the point where even strong counterpoints against her reasons are denied their merits within the mind. There is only one person with the Sharingan eye capable of this. Oh Shisui, did you really have to go that far? Did Hiruzen put you up to it? knowing you would do anything he asked of you for the sake of his vision. Or was it Danzo? Did all three of them conspire against Naruto in order to keep him completely dependent on Konoha regardless of the abuse he would have suffered through without support from those that mattered? Thought Itachi while he saw the genjutsu continue to make the woman angrier at the mention of her being wrong about Naruto. Enough. Tsunade I am giving you a choice. I will not offer an alterative to this and I am only offering this to you one time. You either abandon your hatred for Naruto kun or, or I remove you as member the Senju clan. Dotin, as my granddaughter, said Hashirama with Tsunade and even Toborama looking at him in shock. W what? whispered Tsunade in shock. Brother, asked Toborama while Hashirama raised his hand to silence him. What is stronger Tsunade? Our clan, which has long since promoted friendship and love for our family. Or your misplaced hatred for Naruto kun. I am not kidding Tsunade. 
You may be my granddaughter and I love you. But, I will not love you as family anymore if you make the wrong decision here, said Hashirama while Tsunade looked devastated by this choice. You would choose him over me, asked Tsunade with Hashirama nodding. With the way you are acting toward Naruto. A Jinchuriki like your grandmother was at one point in her long life. Like his mother Kashina from what I was recently told. Yes, answered Hashirama with Tsunade gritting her teeth angrily. Wait Hashirama-sama, let's not be hasty. Let's not make this genjutsu on her help in making the wrong decision here, said Itachi before putting his hand Tsunade head and made a hand sign. Genjutsu. What genjutsu? Thought Tsunade. As she stared into Itachi's Sharingan eyes now spinning hypnotically in front of her before she felt something inside break, and the vast amount of anger she felt toward Naruto was gone. There. Now we will see if the hatred she has for Naruto-kun is natural or there because of the genjutsu placed on her by a member of my clan, said Itachi while Tsunade now clutched her head again. What genjutsu? What are you talking about? asked Tsunade while shaking her head and shaking off the sudden mental confusion she felt right now. Someone put a genjutsu on you years ago. It was designed to make you hate one person in particular by the name of Naruto. Though I know this genjutsu well. The only way the genjutsu can fully work however, is if the person is weak-minded, oh are they, said Itachi while finding himself hesitant to finish in the presence of the two Senju brothers. Or, or what? demanded Tsunade with Itachi sighing and saw both former Hokage's nod to finish the sentence. Or the person already hated the intended target, but kept such feelings suppressed for the most part. As long as the hatred for Naruto was there from the start, the genjutsu had something it could attach to in the form of an anchor to fulfill its purpose, finished Itachi while Tsunade flinched and looked away. Tsunade. Do you really hate Naruto for what happened? Do you honestly blame him for that night? Even now, questioned Hashirama with Tsunade not looking at him until he forced her to look at him by holding the woman's face in his hand. Yes. In some ways, he is responsible for Kashina's death and Kayubi's attack. You know what happens when female Jinchuriki get pregnant, answered Tsunade with Hashirama sighing and shaking his head while Toborama let out a sound from his throat. Tsunade. I asked Naruto about the night of his birth. What the biju told him. Showed him. A masked Uchiha claiming to be Uchiha Madara attacked that night. He ripped Kayubi right out of the seal and forced him to attack Konoha with the Sharingan. Now while I do not believe Madara is alive behind that mask. I do believe a rogue Uchiha was there, and this rogue Uchiha was responsible for the chaos that happened. Not Naruto, said Hashirama with Tsunade crying tears now while denial still existed in them for a second before she broke down and hugged her grandfather. Oh Kami, what have I done? I have betrayed everything that made me a Senju and part Uzumaki. Exclaimed Tsunade into her grandfather's chest. There is still time to correct this Tsunade. You can still connect with Naruto. You can still be a godmother to him, said Hashirama in a comforting tone. I know, and I will make this up to him. Whatever he asks of me, I will pay him back, whispered Tsunade slightly, but it was heard by all three of them. What I want to know is how this Uchiha managed to use his eyes on you. When did it happen? asked Toborama while Tsunade thought back to the only possible meeting she had where an Uchiha was present. And at the time she didn't truly hate Naruto for what he held. Flashback three days after the Kayubi's attack. The boy should be raised by me sensei. I am the closest thing he has to family, said Tsunade while sitting in the Hokage's office with Anbu stationed in it. She had let Shizune stay outside with Taunton because the girl shouldn't see her angry in the event this talk went bad. The boy needs to form bonds with Konoha while growing up Tsunade. You are ready to pack up and leave. Are you telling me that you would stay in Konoha for Naruto? Axed Hiruzen while smoking his pipe. If necessary, then yes. Yes I would, replied Tsunade with Hiruzen frowning slightly. Even though the boy is somewhat responsible for Kashina's death. After all, his birth did cause the demon sealed inside of her to get out, and cause untold destruction upon Konoha, reminded Hiruzen in a subtle way while Tsunade frowned a bit and looked away since the mentioning of Kashina hurt. It was also because she looked away like Hiruzen knew Tsunade would, did the Senju woman miss the subtle hand motion to the Anbu masked Uchiha. He's just a child. He shouldn't be punished just for being born, 
spat Tsunade angrily before glaring at her sensei. I am not saying he should Tsunade. But your hidden tone of anger suggests differently. Hence why you can't raise him, countered Hiruzen while the Anbu masked Uchiha worked the special power of his Sharingan eyes discreetly on the woman while he was talking. So what if I am a bit angry? You would be too over the loss of family and loved ones over the years. Your clan hasn't been dwindling into extinction, exclaimed Tsunade with her anger rising while Hiruzen stayed calm. And Kashina was family to you Tsunade. Uzumaki clan blood binds the two of you in a sense through your grandmother. She was the daughter you always wanted and now that person is gone because of Naruto. If I give him to you, he wouldn't survive to live to see his fourth or even fifth birthday, added Hiruzen while seeing the genjutsu slowly taking hold and filling the woman's eyes with anger. You're damn right he wouldn't. If it were up to me right now, I would break every bone in the brat's body, and throw it into the nearest incinerator. Exclaimed Tsunade with her anger reaching its zenith and smashing her fists against the desk. But it's not up to you Tsunade. It's up to me. Naruto is a Jinchuriki. Meaning he is our weapon of war. Or will be in the future once carefully conditioned to serve Konoha no matter what. I can't have you in Konoha right now given your state of mind. Go out into the world. Go drink. Gamble. Use your talents in the medical field to help others where they are needed. Take Shizune with you. She wants to be a great medic one day so teach her what you know. Encouraged Hiruzen while the Uchiha's Sharingan eyes did their work in influencing Tsunade. I think I will. This village has too many bad memories for me. So long as the brat is here in Konoha, I will not, stated Tsunade before she got up and headed for the door. Don't worry about a thing Tsunade. Everything is under control here, added Hiruzen with Tsunade nodding at him before leaving the room. End flashback. I see. So it was Uchiha Shisui. He told me once how the Hokage has him perform guard duty in his office around the time when Tsunade was in Konoha, said Itachi now that he had enough evidence to arrest his friend for treason. Using his eyes on a citizen of Konoha was bad enough, but to use it on a member of another clan was worse. Even more so when using it to commit treason. I take it you will arrest him for this crime? Asked Tobarama with Itachi nodding. I intend to do it, personally, replied Itachi while heading out of the room to carry out his sworn duty to protect Konoha. Starting by protecting it from itself. Go with him brother. I need to stay here and make sure Tsunade-chan gets her head on straight again by the time we get out of here, said Hashirama with Tobarama nodding before leaving the room to join up with Itachi. I'm sorry grandfather. I'm sorry I was such a disappointment to you. Even without the genjutsu. I still hated Naruto for what I assumed he did when brought into this world by Kashina, whispered Tsunade with Hashirama gently rubbing the back of the woman's head lovingly. You are not a disappointment to me Tsunade. While I was not able to see you grow up to become a competent ninja, I have heard of all the good things you've done for Konoha prior to this. You have become the best medic in the entire world. Your skills in saving lives is second to none. The only thing holding you back now is your pride your guilt, and your fear that everyone around you will die. You must let go of your pride, your guilt, and your fears in order to achieve a means of breaking down the barriers you have created for yourself, replied Hashirama while Tsunade looked up at him in shock. How do I do that? asked Tsunade while Hashirama smiled and kissed her forehead. Don't worry. While I have time in this world once more, I will teach you what to do, and when I'm through you will be even stronger replied Hashirama while almost mentally thanking Orochimaru for using the Edo Tensai, but felt the Sanin was unworthy of it, and decided to mentally thank Naruto for altering the seals in place so they could be alive long enough to fix some very big mistakes. With Naruto and Danzo, many were shocked to see Danzo wearing chakra cuffs and being escorted by Naruto of all people to the T&I department since many did not believe the old war hawk had ever done anything to warrant such a move. Some ninja started to protest this and would have even moved to get Danzo out of the cuff, but Naruto's glare, and sharp killer intent made them back off. It was a reminder to them all who he served that outranked even the Hokages of old. It also reminded them that Konoha was on thin ice with the fire daimyo and any kind of defiance would just be another nail being pounded down into the coffin. You really think this will stop me brat? I may have lost my political seat on the councils when the fire daimyo interfered years ago after taking you in, 
but the roots beneath the tree still grow deep, remarked Danzo with Naruto smirking despite the cryptic warning. If you think your pathetic drones will come to aid you in your time of need, then don't bother. They won't, said Naruto with Danzo frowning. And you know this how? Asked Danzo curiously. Simple. When the fire daimyo decreed that if he found Konoha had become corrupted from the village it used to be when founded, it would be liquidated. Anyone interfering in my investigation in any shape or form while I am here on his behalf would be charged with treason. Impeding the investigation is not good for Konoha. It just means the fire daimyo will close this place down sooner while any and all traitors responsible for the village's corruption will be hanged like common criminals. While your route may be loyal to you Danzo, they also follow the creed you set in doing only what is in the best interest of Konoha. If they were to move against me to save you, it would make them traitors to Konoha, and to fire country. It would result in Konoha being shut down. They would be violating the very creed Root was founded on. That you founded it on. You may be their boss when it comes to leading them Danzo, but in the end. Dot the creed they were trained to follow by you comes first, explained Naruto while Danzo grit his teeth in anger. Damn it, he's right. I conditioned them to follow the most important parts of the creed that Root was made on to the letter. To always do what was in the best interest of Konoha and ensure the village prospers. If they were to free me, the fire daimyo would see it as an act of defiance to his wishes, and end Konoha with a simple command. Even if I were to give the order to break me out of prison, they wouldn't obey the command despite their loyalty to me due to the followings of the creed. Thought Danzo at the idea of having his own principles about Root being used against him. He had hoped through all the chaos that the position of Hokage could somehow still be reached, even with the fire daimyo making Itachi the new Hokage. While everyone was dragging their feet in terms of what to do, Danzo had begun whispering through the ninja ranks how he was really the new Hokage, if only acting as a secret one. He intended to lie about how the fire daimyo had made this decision in secret while Itachi was the official Hokage on paper. That this was done in order to prevent Konoha's enemies lurking just around the corner from ever knowing the truth. Danzo even planned to recruit Shisui to his cause in using the Sharingan again on Itachi before the Uchiha prodigy could even see it coming. Hiruzen had done it to get Tsunade to hate the Kyubi Jinchuriki so Danzo knew it could be done again on Itachi if one timed it perfectly. Unfortunately, his overall timing of his actions against Tsunade to reinforce the Genjutsu Shisui placed on her had been thrown off due to the Kyubi Jinchuriki's interference in wanting to see her. The plan was to lock the Genjutsu in place with the seal, dishonoring the Senju woman to the point where her misplaced anger toward the Jinchuriki would have forfeited her right to be Hokage in the future should Itachi meet his end sooner than he would have liked. Jiraiya didn't want the position due to his own vices and ways of living. With Tsunade already having the ire of Naruto and the fire daimyo made Danzo the next best and only remaining candidate to become the actual Hokage of Konoha. Again, his timing for these things had been miscalculated, a rarity in itself, and Naruto along with his temporarily brought back to like Senju cousins had interfered. Also, I doubt you are the true patriot of Konoha you proclaim yourself to be Danzo. So don't you dare call yourself one with a straight face. It's an insult to the will of fire, added Naruto while Danzo scowled at him. As if you know anything about the will of fire brat, countered Danzo while Naruto smirked at him. Actually, I do know quite a bit about the will of fire. I was told about the will of fire by the two people who helped in the creation of the concept for Konoha. Or has your vision truly failed you regarding just who it was that stopped your action at the hospital? Naruto shot back with Danzo growling in anger. Their version of the will of fire is over. Snuffed out upon their deaths. The world has no place for such naive dreams, remarked Danzo before being jabbed in the back by Naruto. The same could be said for you and Hiruzen's version of it. Your version can't even be called the will of fire because you believe in not having emotions. Fire is an emotion in itself just as it is an element. By your own concept of things, the will of fire isn't a fire at all but rather a pile of ashes with a few burning embers, countered Naruto with Danzo not liking how his version of the will of fire was considered in such a manner. And I suppose Hiruzen's was a better version? Questioned Danzo with Naruto scoffing at him. Hardly. If anything, he made his own concept regarding the will of fire out to be too hot. It burned almost everyone who got near or tried to touch it. 
Even those loyal to him were burned by the fire and only because he made sure no one outside of himself knew how to properly wield it. The man was never one for sharing. He portrayed himself as the caring grandfatherly figure to the young, but deep down he was greed, self-righteous power-hungry asshole, who deserved to die for his past crimes. Your legacy will be no better upon your execution once Ibiki is done with you, remarked Naruto with Danzo not liking that last part. I have done absolutely nothing to warrant an execution, protested Danzo with Naruto scoffing at him. Oh really? Then you won't mind if Ibiki, Anko, and Inoichi rip your wrinkly old head open to confirm that statement. Questioned Naruto with Danzo staying quiet while his face became a snarl. What is the meaning of this? Demanded Homura, as he along with Kaharu were now blocking their way to see Ibiki, and were none too pleased by this. I'm taking this traitor here to Ibiki. He is being charged with treason against Konoha for trying to put an unauthorized seal on Senju Tsunade, answered Naruto with Homura and Kaharu scowling, but what caught the blonde's attention was they weren't surprised by what they heard. You have no right to do that brat, stated Homura while Kaharu nodded in agreement. Oh, and who are you to tell me what I can and cannot do? Are you the fire daimyo? asked Naruto with Homura scowling further. No replied Homura through gritting teeth. Are you the Hokage? asked Naruto with Homura's scowl deepening. No, replied Homura again with an even more strained voice. Are you either of these things? asked Naruto to Kaharu with the elderly woman shaking her head no. No, replied Kaharu in a simple yet miffed tone. Then you have no authority here. Step aside, commanded Naruto with neither obeying. We do not answer to you or your authority boy. Danzo is a well-respected comrade and loyal patriot of Konoha. Hiruzen may have been forced to bend to the whims of the fire daimyo in granting you some form of authority, but we are not so kind as him in regards to obeying such commands, replied Kaharu while Naruto scowled at them. You seem very confident in yourself right now despite knowing you are committing treason against the fire daimyo by impeding his authority, remarked Naruto while the two seemingly joined at the hip shinobi advisors seemed unafraid of the concept that they could be charged with treason. We will see who is charged with treason by the end of the day, remarked Homura with Naruto sensing they were no longer alone. He was surrounded and by root ninja at that. Strange. I assumed they would follow the creed of root and not interfere knowing what would happen if they do. Apparently, you persuaded them to think otherwise, remarked Naruto while Kaharu and Homura smirked while Danzo was feeling more confident he could get out of this. No one loyal to the fire daimyo, where they are shinobi or samurai, are in this general area right now. We have blanked this area in a genjutsu to keep prying eyes away from this moment. You will not make it to your intended destination brat. You will be beaten, restrained, and the official word to the fire daimyo was you were attacked by an ambush party of sound nin hiding in wait. You will be reconditioned to be Konoha's weapon and will be our weapon against those that oppose us. Even if that person happens to be the fire daimyo himself, it was foolish of him to get involved in your life and shaping it into the very abomination that stands before us, said Kaharu while Naruto smirked at her. Do you really think the fire daimyo is going to simply take your word for it? Unlikely given your own stained reputations that are just as filth as Hiruzen's and Donzo's own. He'd sooner trust a pet monkey over you too, remarked Naruto before bringing out his staff and looked around at the number of enemies in front of him. Take him, commanded Homura before wave after wave of root shinobi descended upon Naruto. Naruto smirked despite the situation. Looks like he was going to get a descent workout today after all. Uchiha clan district at the moment. The Uchiha clan was having a massive clan-wide party. For once, after going through four Hokages before today, an Uchiha would be made the Gondaim Hokage. And why not? They had earned it. All the years of ridicule, suspicion, and resentment since the Kayubi's attack made life in Konoha almost unbearable. It was getting really infuriating. But now, now they had one of their own in the Hokage's chair. Wearing the Hokage robes. The Hokage's hat. Wielding the authority such a title provided as the supreme ruler of Konoha, fire daimyo notwithstanding, while commanding all of its ninja to obey the one wearing the hat. So it was quite shocking to see the appointed Uchiha for Hokage walking through the Uchiha district with the former second Hokage. Both with serious looks on their faces. Granted the looks were always serious, 
but this was more so than usual, and it made a few partiers curious to what was going on. They soon found out when Itachi and Tobarama walked up to Uchiha Shisui, who just so happened to be talking to Uchiha Fugaku, and the rest of the Uchiha clan head's family. Itachi. Tobarama-sama. What an unexpected surprise. We were just talking about you my son, said Fugaku while Itachi nodded while Tobarama just looked on from a few feet back with his arms crossed. I am afraid I cannot stay for the festivities father. Important work as the Hokage has just come up. Hence why I am here, replied Itachi while gazing slightly at Shisui, who was feeling a little nervous for some reason. Really? What business? Maybe we can help, offered Fugaku since the Uchiha police force helping the Hokage would only be beneficial at this point. You can help me by arresting Shisui for treason and using his bloodline on another clan within Konoha, commanded Itachi while the Uchiha in question being charged was now looking pale. All of which went unnoticed by Fugaku who considered it a joke of some kind, and was laughing hysterically. Shisui. Under arrest. Ha. That is a good one son. Exclaimed Fugaku, who was finding it hard to stop laughing right now. I don't think he's joking Fugaku, said Makoto while she saw Itachi staring intently at Shisui with his Sharingan eyes now active. Indeed I am not. As the new Hokage, my first official act is to arrest Uchiha Shisui for using his Sharingan eyes to cast a Genjutsu on Senju Tsunade on the command from my predecessor Serutobi Hirazan, replied Itachi while Shisui began to back up a bit. It was an official order Itachi. You have no grounds to arrest me, remarked Shisui while the mood within the Uchiha clan became more serious after hearing that. The order was illegal and you know it Shisui. The Konoha Charter forbids any clan from using Genjutsu on another clan of Konoha, even if the given Hokage of the time made it an order, stated Itachi while Shisui narrowed his eyes. It was for the good of Konoha. Tsunade was going to take the Kayubi Jinchuriki out of the village to raise on her own. Sandame Sama wanted the brat contained in Konoha to be molded as a submissive weapon. Said Shisui with Itachi narrowing his eyes at him. I know. Tsunade told us about the meeting after I broke the genjutsu. Her family is most displeased Shisui. One of which is standing behind me, remarked Itachi with Shisui now looking between pissed off and scared. Don't you realize what you've done? Questioned Shisui angrily with Itachi nodding. Yes I certainly do Shisui. I am giving Tsunade this one and only chance at redemption to form bonds with her only godson. A godson you manipulated with your eyes to make her hate Naruto so he would never be loved by those that would give it to him the most, replied Itachi with Shisui snarling at him. No you fool. You are ruining everything Hiruzen and Danzo had planned for Konoha. You are ruining everything that will make Konoha great again, exclaimed Shisui, as he moved to flee, but was struck hard in the torso by the speed of Tobarama, and his fist hitting the Uchiha hard. Hiruzen is dead. His legacy died with him. Danzo will soon join my former student for his actions in trying to make your genjutsu permanent, replied Tobarama before he took some chakra cuffs he had with him and bound the stunned Uchiha. Itachi. This is madness. Stop this right now, commanded Fugaku while Itachi looked at his father with deadly eyes. All Makoto and Sasuke could do was watch events unfold before them while finding that they themselves were feeling like they could do absolutely nothing. You may be my father and the Uchiha clan head but I do not answer to you in either way as Hokage. The fire daimyo made it clear that you would have no such power over me and to try would not be tolerated, replied Itachi with his Sharingan eyes spinning at his father. Someone stop them, exclaimed Shisui with many of the Uchiha now unsure what to do at this point. Any Uchiha here who tries to stop us will be considered accessories and will be charged as well for crimes against Konoha, said Itachi with many around him backing down. How can you arrest him? He's an Uchiha, like you, demanded Sasuke at last. You make it sound like I should let his crimes go unpunished simply because he is an Uchiha. Questioned Itachi with Sasuke glaring at him. Of course you should. You are the Hokage so let him go. Demanded Sasuke with Itachi shaking his head. Foolish little brother. Even if I wanted to do what you are suggesting Sasuke, the fire daimyo has already been made aware of Shisui's involvement in this conspiracy. To not do what is right will spell doom for Konoha as a whole. The Uchiha clan is not above the law. 
As members of its police force you must enforce the law as it is and the law is clear when it comes to using a genjutsu on someone from another clan. Unless the genjutsu is meant to help, heal, or aid someone in recovery of an injury it cannot be used on anyone within Konoha. Since Shisui used his eyes on Tsunade to make her hate Naruto so she wouldn't raise him, what he did was one of the highest crimes committed. It is an insult to the Uchiha clan's very honor as a clan and as part of the police force. Any who support Shisui or his conspirators clearly have no clan honor and will be arrested as well before being executed. Decide, stated Itachi while the entire clan hearing this looked at each other while Shisui looked at them with pleading eyes. Come on, get me free, fight them, you outnumber these bakas ten to one, exclaimed Shisui in a pleading tone. Quantity means nothing without the necessary quality to back it up Uchiha remarked Toborama before making the Uchiha march towards the T&I department. All the while, Shisui was pleading for his fellow clan members to save him, and finding his pleas being ignored by all. You just made your very first mistake as Hokage by doing this Itachi. You have made the entire Uchiha clan your enemy from now on, remarked Fugaku while Itachi glanced at his father. On the contrary, I just saved Konoha and the entire Uchiha clan from being liquidated in its entirety. Or did you forget the fire daimyo is not tolerating this village's arrogance any longer? Countered Itachi before handing him a scroll with the daimyo seal on it. What's this? Asked Fugaku with Itachi walking away. Orders. Orders regarding what the fire daimyo would have done had you or anyone else in the clan tried to stop us, answered Itachi before he vanished in a swirl of leaves while his father read the orders and went pale. What orders? What is he talking about? Asked Sasuke in a semi-arrogant tone. The fire daimyo has decreed all conspirators in Konoha who are against Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto and those who put Senju Tsunade in that genjutsu to be traitors of Konoha. Any and all traitors are to be killed in a public execution along with any who oppose the executions for they will be labeled as traitors too. If enough of these traitors happen to be from clans, they will be reduced in number down to the low double digits to single digits depending on just how many are against his actions in the next couple of months, replied Fugaku knowing that if they did protest or stop Shisui from being taken away, dot the fire daimyo would wipe out most of his clan. And something told Fugaku that Itachi would just stand there in the distance while letting it happen. It's all that Naruto guy's fault. He's making my life and the lives within the Uchiha clan horrible. He's making Itachi run our clan through the mud as Hokage even though it should be the opposite. I don't care if Naruto is some kind of messenger for the daimyo, if I see an opening. I will end him, thought Sasuke angrily while ignoring the throbbing loss of his arm. After the fighting ended Sasuke was having his arm or rather the lack of one being examined by a doctor, when his father came to take him home. The Anbu protested this at first but Fugaku used his eldest son's new position as Hokage to get his youngest into his custody to get, proper, treatment. Sasuke was happy his father cared and had been enjoying Itachi's and now the Uchiha clan's success at the seat of power. Until now that is with this arrest. It was right here and now that Sasuke realized his brother had no true loyalty to the clan, but to an outsider, and the feudal lord who supported them. Sasuke knew he needed to do something soon one day or else the clan would not see the glory days it believed would come. In Sasuke's mind, Dot the Namikaze had to die. With Naruto. The blonde Namikaze was panting heavily. Bodies of the root shinobi sent to subdue him were on the ground. Broken. Bleeding. Most of them dead. Danzo was on his knees, his one visible arm was shattered in six places after a root nin got him out of the chakra cuffs, and he reached for the sword hidden in his cane. The sword itself was broken too along with three of his ribs and one of his kneecaps was shattered. Every root shinobi that went to retrieve Danzo was struck down by Naruto and his bojutsu skills mixed with taijutsu. The fire temple monks trained him well. Unfortunately, he had only gone through a little over half of them with plenty more to go plus the two shinobi advisors though Naruto seriously doubted they would be a threat given how they traded in their ninja skills for political ones. And yet, he kept on grinning despite being tired, as his body, despite being strong for his age, had been strained during the fighting of all the sound nin a few days ago, and had yet to fully recover all of his strength when fighting the Sandame Hokage. 
Clearly his enemies knew this and felt this would be the best if not only time to stop him from doing whatever it was he was doing with the fire daimyo's support. It's over Jinchuriki. We have won, stated Homura while Naruto just laughed. Hardly you old fossil. I am not defeated and I have successfully held my ground despite the overwhelming numbers against me, countered Naruto with Homura frowning angrily at him. Such naive hope in thinking that you will come out of this battle the victor. This is why you are defective as you are now. We will have to take special measure to ensure your mind does not think like that ever again, remarked Kaharu, as she wanted the Jinchuriki to be in a constant state of depression, submissive to all commands, and believing that his life was worthless no matter what. Then come get me yourself. Don't send your pawns to do the dirty job that is treason for you. Of course, given how weak and frail you probably are. It is no surprise you don't have the skills to do anything outside of brushing your teeth and wiping your own ass. Countered Naruto with Kaharu bristling in rage at the disrespect. Rip out his tongue. A weapon does not have the right to have a voice or speak against its wielders. Commanded Kaharu with Naruto smirking at her while making a come and get me hand motion before turning it into flipping the bird. If Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto was going down, he was going down smiling and with as many of these bastards as possible. Of course, before the remaining route Shinobi could do as ordered, everyone felt the high-level Genjutsu cast to keep this fight a secret was now broken, and one Senju Hashirama along with Tsunade made their appearance known. Neither looking happy. We were wondering why Naruto had not returned from dropping Danzo off to the T&I department so we felt the need to investigate, remarked Hashirama while glancing at the route Shinobi on the ground and waiting to attack. Hashirama sensei, you do not understand we, pleaded Homura, but was silenced by the cold glare sent his way by the former Shodaim Hokage. I understand enough. I understand you would usurp the current fire daimyo, pervert the will of fire, and you more than likely went along with the plan by your former teammate Hiruzen to have my granddaughter kept under the genjutsu to hate Naruto-kun here. I can also imagine you supported Donzo's desire to keep it locked in place with that seal his root nin was preparing when we interrupted him, said Hashirama while Homura and Kaharu glancing at each other nervously. Bastards. Both of you. You speak of doing what is best for Konoha, but the whole time it was just for the select few like yourselves in power. You are just a bunch of fucking hypocrites. Exclaimed Tsunade while Hashirama put a hand on her shoulder. Language Tsunade. Just because you are a full-grown adult doesn't mean I'll tolerate that kind of foul language while I'm around, scolded Hashirama while Naruto sweat dropped. Seriously, I've been fighting these guys in secret, revealed their treasonous actions, and the one thing he's frowning upon is Tsunade's choice of foul language. Thought Naruto while wondering what was wrong with his cousin clan. Then again, Naruto was sure the Uzumaki clan had problems too so he couldn't exactly be judgmental. Karen's temper at all things related to women having bigger breasts than her was one of them. The will of fire is for the elite of Konoha. Those who understand the power behind the flame. Who can wield it like a weapon? Everyone else is just wood and kindle to keep it alive. The citizens, the shinobi, and even the clans regardless of their so-called prestige are meant to be sacrificed to ensure the fire keeps burning. You and everyone else are to do your duty while we wield the power behind the flame and smite all of our enemies with it. Said Homura like he was reciting from some of religious text. That is not what the will of fire is you fool. Never, did I teach you, Hiruzen, or Kaharu in that fashion. You twisted my teachings in order to justify your actions because you knew that it was the only way to keep the concept of what you were doing to the village from being considered wrong by others. You never could stand the fact you could be wrong about something. Either of you, countered Hashirama while Homura, Kaharu, and Danzo scowled at his accusations. Even if they were true. Not that they would ever admit it. Your way of doing things is over sensei. The time has come for the will of fire to purge the enemies of Konoha from within and without. You are no longer worthy to wield the power of the flame. You must burn like everyone else said Kaharu while Hashirama slowly clenching his fists. If I'm not worthy, then why are your roots so afraid to finish me with their so-called fire? Axed Hashirama while glancing at the clearly nervous root shinobi around them. What are you waiting for? Kill the two senju, commanded Kaharu while the root shinobi around them hesitated in obeying. Foolish old bat, 
You really think these root shinobi are going to challenge one of the key founders of Konoha? Not only is it suicide on their part, but their deaths will just weaken Konoha, and the creed of root clearly prevents them from doing something that would threaten Konoha's future. The lack of manpower for Konoha to defend itself due to the death of its ninja or being severely injured in a fight is one of those things, remarked Naruto while smirking at Danzo since the creed the war hawk used when forming it was both a strength and a weakness. You are a liar. Danzo has sent plenty of root shinobi on impossible missions and most never came back from them alive, countered Homura with Naruto smirking. True but only because he had plenty of shinobi to replace them at the time so ordering his root nin to march to their deaths wasn't an issue. Not so anymore. Konoha is being purged of this corrupt fire you, the old bitch, and old war hawk here have been trying to spread like a plague through Konoha. To put it simply, Konoha has become diseased with corruption, and the fire daimyo has assigned me to be the cure. Whether by cutting out the disease altogether, are just burning the body to the ground and start from scratch with what is left that can be saved, answered Naruto with his eyes locked onto Homura's and making it known the order and all-out burning of this village was on standby ready to be signed should it come to that. You're bluffing, was Homura's natural response to this claim despite his mind telling him denial of this fact wasn't going to help. Keep resisting and find out, countered Naruto while almost looking each to have them call his supposed bluff so it could blow up in their faces. The genjutsu is lost. We need to retreat before ninja loyal to them show up, whispered Kaharu while glaring angrily at Naruto. If you are thinking about running along with your remaining root shinobi, don't bother trying, replied Hashirama before snapping his fingers and a swarm of Konoha shinobi surrounded them along with a contingent of the fire daimyo's samurai coming out of the alleyways with swords drawn. So that's why it was taking you guys so long to get here while I was fighting remarked Naruto with Hashirama smirking now along with his granddaughter. I may be a temporarily brought back to life Senju and a former Hokage of Konoha, but I'm not without my brains Gaki, remarked Hashirama confidently. I can see your point. Arrest all of these root shinobi, Danzo, Kaharu, and Homura for treason. If they resist, make them regret it, said Naruto with the Konoha shinobi and the fire daimyo samurai moved in to take them all into custody. I think you just made Ibiki's and Anko's day, remarked Tsunade while Naruto smirked since he knew the two were going to probably send him, thank you. Cards for this. I do what I can when it matters, said Naruto though his smirk left him when he turned to fully face Tsunade. Listen, Naruto I just want to say, said Tsunade before Naruto stopped her with his hand raised. You don't have to apologize Tsunade. People you trusted conspired against me and used you to be their pawn. You lived for over a decade in a genjutsu reinforced lie, knowing that truth and what could have been had that not been the case as punishment for you. I am not going to hate for what happened because that would be like how most of the villagers in Konoha hate me for something the Kayubi did when under the genjutsu the masked Uchiha pulled with his eyes, replied Naruto while seeing Tsunade sigh in relief at him letting things go. I would like to be your godmother again Naruto. A true godmother. Please grant me this honor Naruto pleaded Tsunade before she did the one thing no one expected her to do when asking for this. She got on her knees and bowed her head. Tsunade. To do what you are doing while asking for this takes courage. You truly are my granddaughter, thought Hashirama while smiling at his child's child. Get up Tsunade. No godmother of mine is going to get on her knees and beg, replied Naruto with Tsunade looking at him with teary eyes and got off the ground. What do you want to do now Naruto-kun? asked Hashirama while Naruto sighed, as he ran a hand through his hair, and looked at them. I'm not going to lie to you Hashirama-sama. Konoha was to be judged by me in terms of its survival. When I first came here after spending quite a few years being protected by the fire daimyo and being trained to be a combination of three different entities, Konoha was on life support. The people hated me, the councils, and the Hokage wanted me under thumb. Hell, my first day back I stopped the rape being committed on the Inazuka clan matriarch's daughter by a couple of chunin, and junin simply because they thought they could. As time passed, I saw so much hatred, and corruption that I thought it would be a slam dunk decision to inform the fire daimyo to march his army in here to purge the village of almost everyone in it, replied Naruto with Hashirama frowning when he heard this and so did Tsunade since it was clear Konoha had lost a lot of its will of fire. I sense a, but, 
in there somewhere, said Tsunade with Naruto nodding. But, I also saw light among the darkness. I saw a select number of people who were not corrupted like many had been around them. I saw kindness. I saw hope. I saw, I saw the will of fire in its purest form. If I gave the order to the fire daimyo to destroy this place, I would be destroying that purity, and cannot in good consciousness do that. I see a very slim chance of Konoha changing for the better. Over the years, this village has become arrogant, fat, and lazy off its own hype. The only way to trim the fat and whip Konoha back into shape is to humble the village regardless if they like it or not. Meaning it needs to take a hit every once in a while and this is one of those times, finished Naruto with Hashirama and Tsunade nodding. With everything that has happened recently just now, Itachi will need two new shinobi advisors to help him guide the village to that promised day, said Hashirama with Naruto nodding before they both looked at Tsunade. What? You mean me? Oh no, 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 I am not advisor material. Not with my track record, protested Tsunade with Naruto shaking his head at her. Who else? There are two spots now open. Why wouldn't you be one of them? Itachi will need someone to help him on internal matters through the village. You can do that while making sure your medical program stays the course. As for the second option, Jiraiya will have to be the next one, said Naruto with Tsunade looking less than happy. Jiraiya, that pervert, he hated you before I did and his hatred wasn't caused by any genjutsu from a Sharingan. Exclaimed Tsunade hotly while Naruto sighed. True, but after living these last couple of years in a humble, and hermit-based lifestyle has done wonders for his mentality. Not to mention it was through his spy network that we were able to coordinate a counter-offensive against Orochimaru and Hiruzen when they set their plan in motion. It took a major kick in the ass, but the man has definitely seen the light. Will I ever call him godfather in my lifetime? Probably not. But he does care about Konoha. Granted his actions in proving it were misplaced thanks to the third Hokage being a power-hungry asshole. Sorry Hashirama-sama, but it is true. I also firmly believe Jiraiya's talents could be useful in helping Itachi with external matters because he can run his spy network easily enough to provide our new Hokage with intel in order to run the village better. To ensure this works properly, he will need to properly train a new spy master, who goes out into the field, and communicates with those spies. It will take time and effort, but I'm confident this will help Konoha prosper, and become what it once was during Hashirama's time, countered Naruto with Tsunade reluctantly admitting to herself that Jiraiya's talents were second to none and could be a serious benefit to Konoha if used correctly. Fine, but if that pervert tries anything, I reserve the right to deck his face in, and send him flying out of the meeting room, stated Tsunade with Naruto smirking. Fair enough, replied Naruto since Tsunade's stipulation wasn't too bad. Excellent. Now that this issue has been resolved, let's do an inspection of Konoha and see what else needs to be fixed and was ignored under my former student's watch as its Hokage, said Hashirama before wrapping his arms around both ninja and walked them around Konoha while Tsunade looked embarrassed by his antics. Honestly grandfather, you are too cheery for your own good, remarked Tsunade while her grandfather now had a semi-evil look in his eyes. Oh really, maybe I should tell Naruto here how you made your very first bet and lost at the age of eight. What was it you lost that day? Your favorite slug plushy Mrs. Wheezy Squeeze? Questioned Hashirama while Tsunade blushed an atomic red and glared at him for it. Don't you dare mention that! Exclaimed Tsunade before Hashirama ran away from her with Naruto under his arm while telling the tale of how she made and lost her first bet. Oh you should have seen Tsunade's face Naruto-kun. She was so upset at losing her favorite slug plushy. She cried and cried, bawling her eyes out and saying, I want Mrs. Wheezy Squeeze. To me since I was the one she lost the bet to. Little did I know the reason she was so upset over losing said plushie was due to the secret stash of money she had been hoarding there over the past couple weeks from my own wallet, said Hashirama while running away from a now angry Tsunade and explaining things to Naruto. Get back here, you may be my grandfather, but that won't stop me from killing you after I'm done kicking your back from the dead ass. Yelled Tsunade as she chased after them with fury, and fire in her eyes with the promise of unleashing pain upon her grandfather. Don't listen to her Naruto. She's still upset I never gave back Mrs. Wheezy Squeeze after all this time. 
Did I mention Tsunade Chan slept with said plushie and would drool all over it? The poor thing was more soaked than dry on many occasions. Exclaimed Hashirama before he dodged a lamp post Tsunade had just thrown at him. I'll kill you. Yelled Tsunade before throwing more things at her grandfather. Yep. I knew it. My cousin clan is just as screwed up as my own clan. It is how you can tell we are related. I can't wait to get out of this situation and go see Gara along with his sister at the Namikaze estates to fix his seal. I just hope Tamari and Karen haven't killed each other. Or Gara hasn't killed anyone, thought Naruto knowing this was going to be a long chase and day of his life. That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe for the next video as it's going to be more interesting and also check out my other playlists hope you would like them too.